is there public comment for items not on the agenda? Additions or changes to the agenda? It's right. snowing. Um, That's not on the agenda. It's going to be pouring <laughs> rain on um, Friday, <laughs> and 50 degrees. Are the roads slick? Yes. The salt shaker should hit the county road. I think they use that other stuff, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> Magic okay. salt shaker. Magic salt shaker. All right, so let's get started. We'll skip over um, updates and reports unless somebody has something significant to report. All right, um, let's get started with the Joint Fire Department. Thanks for coming back, guys. I'm glad to see you're recovering from your surgery. Recovering. Good for you. Outcome better than expected. Good. Okay. Is that a break? What is that? No, I, I tore a tendon in the back, and then they had to relocate my biceps tendon. So I got four holes. Sounds but, painful. So I don't have to have the great big one that you're in for four months before you can do anything. And it's your left hand, or unless you're left handed? No, nah, I'm good. Hopefully yeah, okay. it's going to shorten that recovery window by many, many months. Good for you. All right, so trying to figure out where is going to be the best place to start off with this. When you were here before, you had a capital, you went, yeah, why don't you come up, had a capital <coughs> equipment plan that you were putting forward. And is that? Oh, I don't have it in Excel, but I can put it up here. So this is it. Is that what I presented before, or is that that's now? the one that was presented. No, that's not even us. That's highway. Yep. They're called here. They're called W. Yep. Those, yeah, are the copies, yeah. Those are the copies. Those are the copies. I've got huh. this version of it. That's all right. I've got I've got four of these that I can give you guys, which doesn't have that wonderful PDF complete thing on it. Oh, that's good. <clears throat> one that says PDF complete. I'm so glad you figured out how to get rid of that. Yeah. Well, in case you, you had to transcribe the whole thing all over again, didn't you? Uh, no, because I had the original, you had the original on, online, um, but when I updated the computers, the software hadn't updated, so uh, now it's all fixed. Okay, so now you're looking <coughs> at... Where is your plan that you had brought to us before where you're wanting us to Contribute forty thousand dollars to a replacement yep. fund. Yep. No, that was that was the last time I came here. You asked me to sharpen a pencil, so what I did was I went back. I reduced the fleet by one, like we had mentioned. We were look, we were talking about reducing the fleet, which we knew would bring down the cost. Okay. Where is that on here? On here, the fourth line down. There's those two empty spots. Oh, okay. Yep. The that's, 19, that's the nineteen ninety nine. Correct. That's a truck we wouldn't be replacing. We'd be replacing engine one, which is the very top one, with a rescue pumper. So that would be a combination truck to replace both of them at the same time. So what's the bottom line then of what you're asking us to contribute? Sixty-two. Sixty-two thousand. Well, yours would be thirty-one. A year. Before it was eighty and forty. Mm -hmm. Was your share? So now it would be thirty-one thousand for Cal. Thir thirty-one thousand. For each town, that's uh, reducing the fleet by one, and assuming we can get the the resale <coughs> that uh, we're hoping to get, mm -hmm. you know, uh, it's kind of a and that hard be, thing to estimate. But and that would be thirty-one thousand dollars a year for twenty years. Is that uh, what you're asking? Well, that would be thirty-one thousand a year going forward. 
Right, but it says averaged over 20 years. The average over 20 years. Where you look? Where are you? Where are you see? Very bottom. The very bottom. Line. The, yeah, the, the, okay, the, the, the 20 yeah. years is because that's the replacement plan for a, a vehicle, is yeah. 20 years in the fire service. So that $1,390,000 uh, $1, mm -hmm. divided out by 20 years is 69.5. And then we subtracted the other resale value from it, which is what brought it down to the 62. So 62 minus the resale and minus the. Uh, Reduction in fleet, so the other price of that other truck mm -hmm. is what brings it down to the sixty-two thousand. In twenty years, we'd basically be doing the same thing again, replacing the same trucks. Mm -hmm. You have to replace the trucks every twenty years, regardless. And you're also looking, what in the next couple of years, you're going to ask us for a bond for well, our fire station? We're not sure where that's going to go yet. To be honest, uh, we had asked uh, to get one of you to come sit on a panel for us, and we're going to be asking the Woodbury Select Board to provide a member to sit on the panel as well. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, it's in its infancy. We have been given a piece of property. We've done some water testing. We've had a guy digging, uh, trying to do up a site plan for us to see what is possible on that land and, and you know what we'd be looking at. And then from there going forward, we'd want uh, a select board member from each town and a couple members from uh, the, the community to kind of work on a, uh, not so much the site plan, but moving forward and seeing what, what it is and what we can do, if we can do anything. Um, maybe we can't do anything, I don't know. And a bond amount, you would be looking at at least a million, maybe more? I hope not, but we don't know. That's, that's what is to be figured out, is the what. Okay, so just to put this right out there on the table, we currently support two fire departments, East Montpelier and Woodbury, and you know that. Our budget, I have to say, $31,000. I don't know what everybody else thinks, but that's a lot of money for us to come up with all at once in one year. I don't know how we're going to do that. And I don't know how Woodbury Select Board feels about it either. Have you presented this to them yet? We, we don't actually get their permission. We show it to them, but we have to take this to the voters in Woodbury. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what we would do here, too, as well. But, but last, I, last year, you just put it in your budget. We did, but this is a huge increase. Yep, that's fine. And we would have to put it on the warning. I've already got something somewhat drafted, but it's a lot of money. I, I'm fully aware. Anybody else want to chime in? So this is 62000 total. A year. A year. And so our share would be 31 and Woodbury's share would be 31 Yep. And this is capital fund. Yes, that's to replace trucks. And that's not CBA. the operating right. budget. No, no, this is an addition to the operating budget. And so we used to do like the Woodbury truck replacement fund mm -hmm. for like 6000 for so many years we did that. <laughs> and then it went to now it's like now it's seventeen. Seventeen. And then yeah, that's a huge increase. Yep, and that's why we have yeah. a twenty eight year old truck, a yeah. twenty one year old truck, a twenty year old truck, and an eighteen year old truck. Right. Because I mean, six thousand dollars wasn't enough to replace trucks. Yeah. No, and it's so I that's mean, why it's, it's had to go up. Unfortunate that you know you're I mean it's good that you're doing a capital plan now. It should have been done. It should have been done eons ago, and I know that's not your fault, yep. but at the same time, it's really hard to swallow. Sandra? Does the, will the 31,000 go on and the 17,000 come off, or does, is it cumulative? So it's the Wait. operating expenses, the 17,000 that we're currently spending on the truck, right. plus another 31,000. That's my understanding. For six years. Because the 17 is already allocated to two loans. Okay. One for engine four and one for the rescue two. And then that will go away. Those and would stop. That would come exactly. Off. Those that would stop in six years when we're done paying on those loans. Except in six years, the cost, the replacement cost of all those other trucks is going to go up by some percentage, mm -hmm. which will skew your projection. Of course. 
Yeah. I can't tell you what a fire truck's going to cost no. 20 years from now. No, no. nobody can. No. I don't imagine They're you guys can tell me what a dump sure. truck is no. in 20 years. So. No. John? Well, um, you know, we've been kind of quietly discussing this over the last few years, the select board, that we are supporting two fire companies, and I think we're the only town in the state that does that. So we're paying a huge amount of money for fire coverage, um, fire and rescue. And at some point, well, is it redundant when we get mutual aid? Um, you know, if there's a house fire, the neighboring towns show. And I appreciate your, your situation. I pre appreciate our long history, but when the Woodbury Fire Department started, it was a different time. You can get away with more things. And I was talking about last week, year, or last week about you know, Bud Batchelder and Grady and those guys putting a, an oil tanker into service and just welding a pump on yeah. there, <laughs> going around the corner, almost flipping it. Oh, yeah, those days are gone. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I know that. Um, you used to be on the Woodbury Fire Department. I was for just a few years till we had kids, but um, it's very different, and and I think as a proportion of the budget, I, mean, I know things inflate and things times change, but as a proportion of the budget. I would guess, and maybe I'm wrong, and maybe you can prove me wrong, which would be helpful. Um, but um, as a proportion of the budget, you know, our fire service has just become huge from both companies, and I think it, we need to reevaluate this two-town situation we find ourselves in. I, I think in 1960, and 64, and 68. 20 years ago, it, it made a lot of sense because it wasn't that much money. And um, we get good service from you guys, we get good service from East Montpelier, but now it's gotten to a point where we're going to be seeing, if the state has its way, $2.5 million worth of uh, school, debt. school debt transferred from other schools because they're forcing our consolidation. So Callis is taking on $2.5 million of other towns' debt as part of the consolidation. We are getting hammered. And as you all know, and we were talking about this over the years, Paul, this dispatch thing, the dispatch was just incidental. You know, it that's was, gone now, because we're paying all of that now. But what we have with East Montpelier, it's all built in, and, mm -hmm. right. and it's just become so, everything's gotten so expensive. And at the same time, People in our town, like the people on the state, are getting older and they're retiring. And if they're lucky, their incomes are halved. Those are the lucky ones. But I would dare say many more are, are when they retire or can't work anymore because they're physically unable to do so. They're in uh, a crisis situation financially, and you know. So this is what we're what's staring us down, and. Um, I, I don't know what the answer is, quite yeah, frankly, yeah. but I mean, we're getting crushed. Uh, I mean, our uh, right now with the current budget, fire emergency services is 11%, maybe more, of our budget. And you add on what East Montpelier Fire Department asked for and what you guys are asking for. We held the line with East Montpelier Fire Department. And we're paying a bond for East Montpelier right. on top of the, the, the that's included in that 11 yeah. percent. But um, I forgot what I was going to say. Um, it's a lot to ask the voters to swallow. I mean, it, it doesn't sound like much if you say it's so much per, you know, household or whatever. But when you add on the, the increases in other areas that everybody's experiencing in every town, they start to add up, and people are just already saying I can't afford to live here. Yeah. It's really, really a tough call. And I don't really know what to tell you. I don't know if you have any other way to like reduce this more. And the cost of a truck is the cost of a truck. Right. Right. I know. The only but way to reduce is not replace trucks, which means we can't provide fire service properly. Right. No, I get that. I know. And, and On October 30th, we had a fire call. We were the first truck there. We had four people with us. 
We had that fire knocked down in 11 minutes. But it, wasn't that right across the street from? No, that no, was a, that was up on the back road. Up on, uh, up Bliss, on uh, Bliss, road. Bliss Road. Yeah. 11 minutes. That's due to good trucks, good yeah. training, yeah. and great personnel. I know yeah. you guys are you guys are awesome. So we're not, we're we, not... we, we take the trucks out of the equation. We got great personnel sitting in the station. Right. So. I mean, and this is not because we don't yeah. respect and appreciate what you do, but we have to think about the bottom line and, and the taxpayers. And this is kind of the same discussion we had with East Montpelier Select Board about the East yeah. Montpelier Fire Department. The same unpleasant discussion. The same. It's yeah. it's really oh, we hard. Understand. We're, we're, that's fine. Right. So you're, you're suggesting put it on the budget the way it is and uh, I'll have to come to your town meeting. That's what, that's what you're saying? or? I guess we have to decide that. If we're willing to put it on at that number. I mean, that's what you're asking. Have we put, we used, um, refresh my memory, but we used to put the um, truck replacement mm -hmm. fund on. as a separate article. Right. Right. Yeah, and, and then eventually we just put it into the budget. Yeah, um, but now, but now this is this is a huge increase, right? Oh, I understand. And for a completely oh, different yeah, purpose. Well, I mean, if you guys if you guys want to do the the normal budget and what we normally submit the way you've done it, and have me come and talk to the townspeople on town meeting day mm -hmm. for the thirty one, we can do that. Yeah. And that leaves it up to the townsfolk. Sure. Right. You know, if they, if they don't want to do it, they're not going to do right. it. That's But if they're not going to do it, then we're going to Because I understand the pressure to... you guys are under. Well, of course. <laughs> we yeah. get it, too. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. We have to bring this on the floor in Woodbury, too, so we're, we're not right. unfamiliar with what we're And it's no reflection. No, it's no, not. And I don't don't take, we don't take it that way. To, no, we, don't take it, we don't take it that way. Yeah. It's just, it is what it is. You know, the it's trucks cost money. Yeah, I know. End of the story. I mean, if there's no state subsidy or federal subsidy. it's horrible. It's What is... No, that's the problem. It's ridiculous. They subsidize uh, right, police, right after nine eleven. Right after nine eleven, it was all kinds of money for right. fire and police, not... and it's trickled up. It's and we just, I'm on Hardwick Rescue. We had to buy a new ambulance, and the new ambulance has to come with a forty five thousand dollars stretcher. Well, now when I got the price tag, I was like, <laughs> stretcher has to yes. have it. Forty five thousand dollars. Is that the automatic? Yeah, the one that goes up and down. It's like stretcher. I almost passed out, but it's like well, that stadium it. says you have to do it. I'm like. So that raises a, a point for me. Has there been any thought or any discussion um, concern, you know, kind of maybe partnering more with Hardwick for fire to get kind of a, so it's three instead of two towns? I mean, I don't know. I know like East Montpelier, for instance, it's a different district because I've asked this question over the well, years. Well, you're going to have EMS districts. But the fire district thing we talked about East Montpelier about merging with you guys. And right, like, and you can't because it's different districts well, or something. you can do anything. Yeah, well, you can do it. It's, it's whether or not you can do it and have your fire stations within a reasonable amount of time, which yeah. is five miles from your properties. If if what you're suggesting, if we went and joined Hardwick and said, you know what, we're going to be one Hardwick Woodbury fire station well, down in Hardwick. That's great. My house is 5.2 miles. Yeah. But no, but you would keep... It doesn't the change. Well, yeah, but station. we still have the cost of the station, the cost of the trucks. We still have all the same mm -hmm. cost. Right. There would be no difference. That's true. So you're things. saying, yeah. you, so you're saying you could merge with East Montpelier? There's no yeah. reason you could, and it would be a long conversation. But there's no, there's no law that says you couldn't. Because no, we've it. been told over the years that you no. can't. Oh, one person told us because that. it's yeah, different I mean, districts or something. They, well, I know in EMS districts, Woodbury's technically in District Six, but because we have a Hardwick ambulance is our ambulance. We're in District Four, and that's just an a, arbitrary line that State mm -hmm. EMS drew. And I don't know who made that decision, but that's how it is. Mm -hmm. So we do EMS in Woodbury in District Four. Um, minimal amount of stuff in Calais. We get to car accidents and things. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think that that that's uh, not an insurmountable issue. If as an issue is what I would think, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Right. The same thing comes back into into the equation with East Montpelier. Yeah. How do you merge East Montpelier and Woodbury and not have the same fire stations, the same trucks, the same cost? Yeah. Because we can't put our fire station in East Montpelier with right. no trucks in Woodbury. Right. So we still have to have all the same stuff. Yeah. Well, yeah, but you might be able to share. Well, maybe right. East Montpelier gets rid of the old station. Well, and there's then, a conversation that could right. be had. And, and the other station stuff. is the Woodbury station. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, over the years, we've been led to believe that that's, it's an impossible 
thing because it's two different districts. That's yeah, no one's ever approached us. I don't, I, not if not I heard of. I, say, I don't think it would be impossible district wise. Yeah. I think yeah. the impossibility is you have to have the station within five miles of the properties. We well, can't, we can't tell within, Woodbury folks. You're not within five miles of my house. But we are a lot of people's houses. We so, are a lot of people in Calus's house. You know, but East you would still be, but you us. would still be within five miles. It's not going to change. People's houses aren't going to no, move no, no, just because yeah. you just. No, I get merge. what you're saying. Yeah. It's an interesting conversation. I've, I've been involved in the whole uh, Central Vermont Public Safety Authority thing, which has been a real sticky wicket. But mm -hmm. um, same conversations being had. It's just that the, the execution looks really difficult. Yeah. That's a problem. Yeah. And I mean, and really, <laughs> you have to think about it. I don't really see what would the cost savings be. Unless, well, you might have the right, have equipment the spread out <coughs> so that. Still have to have the two equipment. engines. Right. You still have to have the rescue. What what we do now in mutual aid benefits is because we have ice water rescue and mm -hmm. right. you pick something someone else doesn't have. Like Hardwick has a ladder truck, so Woodbury doesn't need right. we've called the ladder truck to Callus a few times. Yeah. Well, that's, they bring that's the ladder we, truck to town. Yeah. So that's how, how we all yeah. Yeah. we don't need one. I don't know, I'm just trying to think of ways to <laughs> go <laughs> forward to make I know. To if it was easy, we'd, done, we'd all do it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and we would have done it already, we or we would have known yeah. it already. Having looked at the, for us it's not an impossibility, it's a conversation I would entertain, you would entertain, it's just, it's a, being involved in that very Montpelier, that's a real stick, sticky wicket, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. if you've been keeping track of it. Yeah. Because uh, dispatch is all entangled in that. And, yeah. right. and like I said, it's not that we don't stuff. appreciate Yeah, no, and I don't, I don't read that from you at all. You know, we knew this was a tough sell. It is a tough yep. sell. Because we're all taxpayers, too. Well, yeah, I know. That's I, just I, it. I pay taxes, too. And, and in Woodbury, it's twice the increase right. that it is for Gallus. You know, this 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 as the $40,000 would represent about 1.2 cents for you guys. It actually does 2.5 for us. Because you have 700 less, less exactly. valuable right. property. They have a lot right. less, right. Folks less valuable property. Yeah, I guess that's the best. I don't know if that's the right words, but... Yeah, the grand, list, grand list grand list size. Yeah. Right. right. So it's a right. it's a double hit for our town. Not my expertise. Right. Right. That's where yeah, I Yeah, I'll be I'll be get it. curious to see, you know, if if it passes in Woodbury or Dallas. We're, we're in crisis mode. This yeah. Oh, it's tough. I everywhere. Yeah, yeah well we, we got hit with the uh, force merger too. Yeah, our school is getting merged too, so nobody we're, we're in uncharted territory in Woodbury School ourselves. And who do you have to merge with? We have to merge with Hardwick, Standard, Greensboro, Crassberries, and Limbo. Crassberries and Limbo. Yeah. Wilkett's going towards Stowe. So we're we're all in like uh, mode too. Yeah, we have I know. The exact it's, same problem you have. It's everywhere. So town meeting will be interesting, is all I'm going to say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's going to be ugly. We're all in uncharted territory. We are. That's and for I'm sure. not sure because we got owns the property questions and what's yep. going to happen and we <sighs> yeah all right anything else folks to to, to so this is the budget about? so the budget and the regular truck fund you're okay with um so you'll resend this without the I don't know. Can you get rid of that? <laughs> yeah. That's out of my so it's a 2.3 percent yeah we kept increase. it down as low yeah. as we can keep it oh you got copies well, it has no, those sticker, no, those stickers got, on it. Copies of this. Uh, no, no, no. I haven't got copies of this yet. Without it. I but have the, it in but the, the bottom Excel line. file now, John. Yeah. That I can it's not you. much. It's how did you do that? In October, right? Oh, because he knows how to do this stuff. Isn't it disgusting? Yeah, and don't, then I had to get fill in the buttons. <laughs> oh, you didn't just do that. Now you did this a while. Yeah. I did the Excel a little while ago, and I took a guess at what the numbers would be, and <laughs> fortunately, <laughs> they were confirmed. So the biggest increase is the soft computer software. That go up. 112%. So this fundraising thing, that's how much you hope to raise, or that's how much it costs you to do a fundraising? No, nope, that's how much we try to raise every year, and we usually use that for something uh, like a gear dryer. Which we bought last year. Last year we bought a gear dryer. Uh, this mm. year we raised, uh, just over ten thousand to put towards rescue two, which is why we only asked for seven thousand for rescue two because we were going to raise the focus our fundraising for, for that ten thousand really? on that. It was ten thousand six. It's sitting outside. Right. Fund I was going to say it's right out here. Yeah. Um, it's not completely done yet. Um, so yeah, we try to raise ten thousand every year on that fundraiser. 
Sometimes we get close, but most years we do get a little. How much does it cost you to have them do a fundraiser? About 1200 bucks. Really? Yeah. That's yeah, been very that's effective for thing. us. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah a lot of people, I get a call if they don't get their letter, they're like, where's my letter? <laughs> oh, that's nice. Yeah, and we've, we've uh, let's see, the first year we did an E2 upgrade for our, yep. our wildland fire truck, and then last year we did the gear dryer, so now we have, you know, it, it takes takes a couple of days to dry your gear once you get it clean, which you have to do after every fire. Uh, so you've got a, a set of gear sitting around wet for two days. Uh, now it takes four hours. So you hose your gear down nowadays? We, so have, we have a washing machine. machine. We have a washer. Special one. Yeah, special I got a special one. washer. Special. Back in mid-2000s, I got a grant for a washer extractor because of cancer. So we were, yeah, yeah, as soon as we get it done a fire, our gear is yep. treated like a hazard and it goes right in the Especially that, that big fire goes, we had on yeah. the 30th. You know, we had two fires. Oh, that. We you had lots of people. Double homicide. Yeah. Double homicide. Blast, a lot of yeah, plastic up there news, burning. Was, there was lots of nasty stuff There was lots of nasty stuff in there. So everybody's gear went in the wash. Yeah. So let me ask this. There's a line item 131, one-time equipment purchase of $10,000. That's that's that where we spend that. That's where yeah. we spend the money for the that's fundraising. Where fundraising. Yeah, that's the actual expenditure. Yeah. So where does it, because you've got the SCBA on here. Where is that on here? When is it, when do you have to replace that? Or is it? Air pack. That's under air pack? So we have to do a, a no. cylinder replacement this year mm -hmm. in 2019. Because the SCBA is on this. Yeah, I know. Uh, Oh, okay. That's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. They've never. Right now, we don't have a program to replace our SCBA, which is 15 years old now. So where is? So what are you asking us for for this? Is this the 4,500? Where? I don't see anywhere on here that I can understand. The miscellaneous equipment is ninety thousand dollars, which replaces all 14 air packs and the 14 additional bottles. But where is that on here? It's not on here. That's what I keep telling you. There's never been a capital replacement fund in the budget. Uh, They've never done this. This is something completely right. new idea. And we, we have to replace them. So part of the 31,000 <coughs> is to replace the SCBA stuff as well. Yes, ma'am. Uh, okay. All right. It's not this it. truck, it's also our. Yeah, yeah, that's that's okay. why we put that in there because it's such a heavy duty price tag item. We yeah. figured that should go into the capital replacement as well. Yeah, yeah, they're expensive, but they're well, they're, they're you have absolutely to have necessary. Them. I can't even yep. go in a carbon uh, monoxide yeah. detector. Uh, yeah. Going off without that one. I lucked out. I uh, uh, what was it? No. When did we do the fit testing? July. August. August. Uh, the salesman was up to do our fit testing and make sure our masks fit properly. Mm -hmm. He was actually there. They were in a transition on the Scott, uh, the new mask that Scott makes, and it has a heat uh, camera in it, an infrared camera. And he wanted to get the new one, which he has to pay 400 bucks for all his demo models. So he sold me his demo model for 400 bucks so he could get the brand new one. So I got the uh, infrared uh, camera in my mask, which you know cost me yeah. 400 bucks, but um, it saved your life. Yeah. Because yeah. so one of our struggles this year is we've got to replace all of our cylinders mm -hmm. because the Department of Transportation will not let us test them anymore. They just arbitrarily said at 15 years you got to throw yeah. them away. Yeah. Yeah. 600 per cylinder times 24 cylinders. So like, that we, we have to figure out how we're going to pay for that. Is that on here now? Well, we're going to have to pay for it, either raise the money so or dig still, it out of something. It's all in this. Yeah, so we're we're gonna, in this, whether we get the other money, we have to buy these new cylinders mm -hmm. next year. There's no option for us, sorry, because I can't transport them anymore. And it's how much? They're around 600 per cylinder times, what do we got, 26, 24, 26 20. actually, 20, so, 25, sorry, 25. 600, you said? 12,600. Yeah. So we've got to raise that money. It's 14,400. Yeah, yeah but we have to. That's one of our have to's this year mm -hmm. in 2019 because the DOT yep. won't let us carry And they're called the air cylinders? Yeah, the, yeah, the SCBA air cylinders. Because DOT just arbitrarily said that they had 15 years Still, even if they pass the Hydra test. 26 members, but yeah. You have 26 members, that's nice. No, well, that's, no we have 26 like, tanks. 26 oh. tanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, those, those tanks only give you, if you're About a really good breather, 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. And I got one, maybe two people that can get 30 minutes. Most people get about 20, something down to the average. Any, uh, any physical I'm, work. I'm about 21 on a tank, but... 15 to 20. So every, every member has so, one tank that they have on and they have a spare. So yeah. to have a spare so that people can go back in. Okay. 
So anyway, that's our challenge within our existing budget to figure yeah. that out. Yeah, it's a challenge so, everywhere. Yeah. No, we got it. So yeah. yeah. So we understand. Okay. Yeah. So thank you for coming back. Sure. So how, yeah. would you, how would you like us to proceed? Do you want me to actually send an article for the capital replacement fund to put in uh, to put in your book, or yeah. how, how would you like to handle that? Board members, are you willing to put this? Do you willing to put this on the warning? It's a separate budget item. A separate line. Yeah, it would be a warned, separate warned item. Right. Yeah. I mean, you need to go to that. Yep. Maybe not. Yeah. 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 I, ultimately, I see this as it's a hard decision, but it does impact lives, and the people whose lives are involved are the ones who need to be empowered to make that decision. And hopefully we get a good, you know, a good turnout so we can have a good discussion about it. And you'll be coming. Oh yes, chance will come. Yeah, I'll come. Okay. I'll I'll I was going to say, Tim, if if you guys put it in the budget, that way you'd have somebody to respond to questions. But if if you're going to do a separate article, then yeah, I'll I'll come myself. Okay. That way we can have a discussion with whoever wants to talk about it. And Woodbury's putting it on there. It will be. Yeah. Good morning. Yeah. Yep. All right. All right. And so did you what, do, a, do you need a page that? for the town report? The I'll be sending. Report. Yeah. What's the date by the? And I need the email address. To, I'll get my chief's report. The date. The, the date was December tenth. Did it need to be yeah, July? Yeah. Oh, I didn't get that. Judy, Sorry, you can send it to me, Council. Okay. When Because I won't be able to close the numbers out till G January first. Is that going to be okay? Yeah. I'll have it to you the first week in January. Uh, I think. So. I think we'll. Sl I'm, we'll probably be sending it to the graphic artist, and maybe she can. All right, I'll do that. Because I won't have the no, final numbers, but I'll. You mean this, I mean, this is, is this is reflecting on 2018. Right, because I just I I can write my chief's report. I've just been not able to do it for a couple of weeks here, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, now that I'm the the chief's report, that doesn't have to have numbers, though, right? No, I can do that without the call numbers. But normally, right, exactly. I'll send you a sheet. As soon as you can get that, yeah. that's yeah. Good. that'll go. Yeah, I usually like to close out the year and then give you here's what we did this last year. Right. Right. Because they don't Woodbury, they don't have to send it in until like the middle of January for printing. Right, but we need to. You need it sooner. We need to. We have it with everything and have okay. a graphic artist. Right. right. I would say I'll get the I'll get you the article for this. Uh, right. Tomorrow. I'll get it to you in the next tomorrow week and a half. Is that going to be okay? okay? The article. Yeah. Um, we'll go to Denise, yeah. but we could yeah. whoever you send it to. Whoever we'll you share. send anything to, we share. Okay, but so. it, within uh, if I get it by the middle of next week, is that going to be okay? Mm -hmm. Just trying to set a realistic goal for me because I'm not 100 percent yet. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. I didn't realize I needed it already, or what I, what I had yeah. to. Yeah. Okay. I've well, been thank a you. little. And would it be possible to stick yeah. a copy of one of your old town reports, or just a photocopy of one of the papers, so I well, see what your articles look like? Um, it's online. Perfect. Since August. That'll work. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. You know how it is. Wait to see this doctor. Wait to see that doctor. Wait to see that doctor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. Moving right along. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all have a good Christmas. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I would, but we gotta you get got this stuff, stuff done. to do. All right. Good night. Thank you very Thank much. You. Can I clarify will the capital replacement be the only part that goes as a board and not their operating budget? Right. Not the current operating that will continue to be in your budget. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. this new it's the new yes. request to establish a capital equipment replacement fund. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so um, the warrants are there waiting for anybody to start picking those up. Anybody who wants to? Um, Katie brought cookies if you want to pass them around, John. Oh boy. Did you make them all? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> no, they're from the post office cafe. It was one of our oh. favorite places. Yeah, mm -hmm. they make good Where's stuff. Where's the post office cafe? I'm in downtown Worcester at the post office. Beautiful downtown Worcester. It's so nice. It's only been Downtown there. Worcester? Every day, 7 to 11. Oh. It's lovely. Isn't that nice? I can't remember last time I was in Worcester. You don't get out much through the road. <laughs> She does. Callis to, to, to the hospital. Callis to the hospital. That's so now my we're life. Let's talk about insurance, ladies. Would you like to join us? Sandra has put together um, spreadsheets about the insurance. I already have mine, so you want to pass them to me, please? 
<laughs> Look at all those yummy things. All right. What's it called? Post office? What? Post office. Post office cafe. It's, it's right, right the behind the post office. office. Go to Worcester Church. Church. We had something to lay I can write that down. <coughs> I can write that down. All right. So Sandra has put together a very time intensive. Oh. I think I checked them off, didn't I? Yeah, they did, but you didn't try it. Okay. Um, the top sheet is the current. And then she did some investigating and came up with some other options. So, Sandra, why don't I let you explain? Uh, the top sheet of the medical insurance comparison package is what our current medical insurance benefit is for the six full-time employees. <coughs> it is a Blue Cross Blue Shield Gold Plan stacked deductible plan. The um, current division of premium is 95% town and 5% employee. And you can see the breakdown of the premium for single two person and family. That's what we have here at this time in Callis. <coughs> Take a note of the total health care premium that's that's the number we're really looking at. Uh, that's kind of on the left at 100610 So that's the cost of the plan for calendar year 18. Uh, keep in mind that Blue Cross Blue Shield is on a calendar year and we are on a fiscal year. So we do the best we can to go from year to year. I researched your bus budget construction last year and I would remind the select board uh, that the budget line for health insurance reflects only premiums, not HRA contributions that the town offers, which uh, for Calendar year, year 18 is $4,000 per employee. So the topic or the comparison uh, to make our comparisons apples to apples, we're really going to be talking about premiums. And then we'll talk a little about the HRA contribution. So if you flip your first sheet over, the equivalent 2019 plan will cost premium wise three roughly three percent more than what we what the what the equivalent plan for 2018 cost one thing to keep in mind this is a these are plans with 850 dollars deductibles uh, it's a 70 40 plan so the first 850 dollars of uh, covered medical expenses are a deductible and thereafter the covered uh, person pays 30% of covered expenses and the plan pays 70%. So on the toward the right hand side you're going to see employee out-of-pocket liability. The liabilities uh, or the out-of-pocket maximum yearly out-of-pocket maximum her employees, except for the one single employee, is $12,100. So the liability for all employees, except for our single employee, is $8,100 annually. Okay, um, so that's per person That annually. is per employee And is annually. that, if somebody has two-person or family coverage, does each person have to meet that $8,100? Well, under a stacked deductible plan, the uh, Person one must meet the $4,700 deductible, and then that next $4,700 deductible has to be met by any combination of the rest of the members covered in that family. Mm -hmm. 
so that uh, before the plan, we'll pay 100% of the covered medical expenses. But so what that means is out-of-pocket expenses. But if you, if it's, what did you say, 4,700 per person? Well, it's 4,700. I, I don't, I, it's 4,700 plus the Cause prescription, that comes, which. Cause that comes to 9,400, not 8,100. No, it, the 12 one includes the medical deductible plus a um, prescription deductible. So I've lumped that in together. Mm -hmm. the, it's, there are two, there are two out-of-pocket um, maximums. One is for medical benefits and one is for prescription benefits. So that 12 one is a combination of both. Where's, where's 12 one? Where's 12 one on, uh, here? on your top sheet. You're going to read stack deductible, out of pocket maximum of $12,100. Okay. Oh, I thought we were on the other page. Okay, but it's, right, still, but it's, it's, still, it's still the there. same. These plans are the second page is the 2019 equivalent of what uh, we have. Uh, what, you, uh, what we currently offer. Correct. Okay. So, of yeah, what we currently good. offer, the increase is a 3% increase. Mm -hmm. The page three is the same plan again with an aggregate deductible the uh, out-of-pocket liability for the employee goes up um, however any combination of family members may meet the medical and prescription deductible so it's you don't have to meet the nine thousand dollars but anybody can meet it or any combination. any combination it's not they're they're not holding anybody's feet to the fire stack deductible is is harsh it's why it's a little bit cheaper mm -hmm. so this plan is actually is for the most part and again we're only talking about premiums is is fair is level funded it's 40 or 50 dollars more showing. per year much cheaper. Well, like fifty bucks, seventy-five bucks. No, it's a little. It's uh, it's uh, a little bit more. It's seventy-five dollars yeah, more. I so know. it's for the whole workforce. Right. Exactly. So it's essentially it's the same. a level funded. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's level funded, but the employees' exposure to out-of-pocket expenses is higher. It's it's oh, not it it's not my favorite plan. Okay. Which one is? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, the next, uh, the next um, sheet in the last sheet, page four, it's in green, is a gold plan CDHP. When I spoke with Blue Cross Blue Shield, because the town is contributing to the HRA deductible, this was their recommended plan based on what the town has done historically. So this is a little more complicated because mm -hmm. I wanted to, uh, one, one, this is a plan that I favor, <laughs> but two, I, I wanted to give a couple of options. If we're looking at a 95-5% split, the total health premiums are $95,700, which is a $5,000 reduction to what we have budgeted right. for. 2018. The reason, it's, one of the reasons. But it's almost $8,000 different to get a flight home. Right? Um, what are you seeing? Well, yeah. that would be 103. Six, one well, three, I'm just looking to compare what yeah. we have this year, right. what is budgeted this year, so we can see a difference, an increase or a decrease over one year's budget to the next. So we would save roughly $5,000. And the reason I favor this, I have a couple of reasons for favoring this plan. One of the reasons is that because we did not, or the select board last year, did not budget for any HRA contributions. They strictly budgeted, you all strictly budgeted for premiums we are going to go over budget in FY19 because that money is not in the budget. Is that an error? I, I, I don't know. I, but I, I can tell you that is what it is because I, I think see, it was based on whatever 
thousand figures for a number. Oh, weren't we told that there's already enough money in that was HRA that was untouched? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We there was money in us. there that you didn't need to make a contribution to the right. HRA. It already has four thousand right. in it or something. Yeah, four thousand seems to be my memory of. Yeah. That's and it hadn't been being used much, so yeah. it was, so it was enough, so we didn't require anything going on. I, I, yeah. I, so that's I'm what just, we were I, I'm just I wanted to go back to see what we and need so to are compare there, apples for right, apples. But that, but what you're saying is there, currently there's no money in the HRA? No. So currently there's $202 in the HRA. Um, over the last six years, the average, and I think what was we were looking at is um, based on the notes that I've seen, is what is the average mm -hmm. HRA use. Yeah, and I think that's what we based on. So the average HRA use uh, since 2012 was um, $10,000. With this year's use, it has popped up to $11,166. That's your per average year. now per year. So, um, well, how much was in this year's? You opened your year with about $5,200. FY19 opened with $5,200 in it. Right. But I have uh, already deposited um, another $6,000 into the HRA since July to cover uh, our claims experience. Uh, during this last yeah. six months. Oh, it's going 15 or something. Yeah. So the, the trick is, or the thought you might have is your population of employees has probably changed over the last six years with singles, families, mm -hmm. two persons. Your yeah. choice yeah. of policies has probably changed. So deductibles uh, are different with regard to your policies and even what policies cover now as opposed to what they covered then. It's a very difficult, it, it is not really, um, it's a very difficult apples to apples comparison. Your, your premiums are, your, is a standard comparison. Your usage of uh, the claims usage or claims history, those are tricky because you don't have the same number of, uh, you have the same number of employees, but you don't necessarily have the same number of dependents per employees over the last six years, which again affects and family your is, HRA usage. Family is anything more than two persons? Yes. So you could have <coughs> five people. Correct. And it's the same, same premium. Yes. Same premium, same deductible. Mm -hmm. So um, this, this uh, gold, gold plan CDHP pardon me, does give us $5,000 in immediate reduction of your monthly premium. So you're, you, that is a possible way to control the cost going through the end of FY19. Mm -hmm. uh, you know you're going to have usage, we're seeing usage uh, of, these, of these premiums, but I think it would help mitigate the, uh, the budget overage uh, by dropping that premium. Mm -hmm. I now, also if, have, you, if you didn't change the employee, is the employee share still 5%? Well, I so did a you, scenario oh, at 90-10. Uh, and at 9010, the town's uh, the town's premiums are $90,000. So we say we're 10% down roughly over or under mm -hmm. last year. Again, that gives a, an additional little pad toward our FY19 budget to help us not go over budget. So those are the premiums. What I like about this plan is if the town does the full contribution of $6,000 per employee and $3,000 for the single plan, the employee's liability goes down to zero. They have no out-of-pocket liability, which I think, frankly, given our um, given our wages, you know, nobody's making a hundred thousand dollars a year here with an eighty-one hundred dollar possible out-of-pocket liability. It's huge. It's a lot when yeah. your salaries are what we are in a town. So I, I simply state that for you as part of your consideration. Um, what I see and uh, is that the increases 
uh, and what what I what I would say the com comparison now would be to the blue page, the weekly employee portion on the blue page. If we stay with the equivalent plan that we have now, if you take a look at um, the weekly empo employee portion, and I, we'll use me. We'll use uh, I have a family plan. It's twenty one eighty six per week. At, at a 10% con contribution, I'm kicking in, right, because the town is putting up more HRA money. It does go up. It's $20 more or so a week. Um, but for from my, for my for my contribution to my premium, but from my standpoint, and I, may I speak for you? Mm -hmm. From Judy's standpoint, <laughs> well, we we've, we've talked about this. That twenty extra dollars a week saves us eighty one hundred dollars in liability, mm -hmm. and it is it's a good investment. It's a good investment. It's a good investment. Um, I have taken up the conversation. I don't know that it is ex exactly in my job description, but I have taken up this conversation. Uh, very superficially with the highway. Um, I can't say there was an enthusiastic response, but there was an invitation to see the numbers. And if the select board thinks that's a good idea, I, I think we should bring uh, a representative from the highway. I think in. we should, if we're gonna talk about it, we should invite all the highway. Yeah. Yeah, can I, can I, I think the information the might get all filtered and you know, each one might have their own. Yeah. I'm happy to, as part of that, I'm, I'm happy to talk through this spreadsheet. Yeah, um, And I would say this to the select board. Uh, uh, again, I'm wearing a treasurer's hat, and obviously I'm wearing an employee's oh, hat. Sure. So, uh, and, and that's that. <laughs> um, and I'm trying to keep the lines as separate as possible. So, but who wouldn't want to not have any liability? Who wouldn't want to not have any liability? <laughs> right. uh, I, mean, I would. It makes sense to me. So what I see is I feel I can save the town ten thousand dollars if we go with a ninety ten. I only come up with a savings of forty eight twenty seven. Are you on the green page? Yeah, I'm on the annual town portion, 95%. Oh, uh, look at the 90% oh, down the 90. at the bottom, 90,742. 90, okay. Yep. So you, that's nine. That's um, 90% of what we paid well, last year. Well, you're saving, again, getting 10, back, you're saving dollars. more than 10,000 yeah, for 10, next year because it was going to go up 3,000. So you're saving 13,000 over what we would be spending if we stayed on the same But course. we also have to put some money in the budget for FY20 for the HRA. <laughs> So what I'm suggesting is this. We don't want sticker shock to get any one of your budget items. We're, we're um, getting used to sticker shock. Well, I, I'm not getting used to sticker shock at all. I still, some things still take my breath away. I would not counsel us trying to fund our HRA account all in one shot. That sure, is yeah. not what is sensible at this point in time. What I would suggest is um, we get a ten thousand to holler respite, or a five thousand, or thirty-seven hundred seventy-five hundred dollar respite for the next six months. Right off of our FY19 budget because our premiums right. go down immediately. We start now. Mm -hmm. So right. that helps us save our FY19 mm -hmm. budget for no for not having any HRA money. Well, yeah. We don't have any time on this. This is like now. This is like now. Yeah. We really have to do I was it's actually yeah. I was supposed to come last week. I was pretty ill and also uh, there was so many other things on the agenda. I was asked to come tonight. So, I'm sorry that this so feels pressure. So, what's the what's what's the <coughs> too late date? Uh, December 31st. So, we need to move on this. And we're meeting on December 27th. Okay. And we can have a, we can have a, you're going to be on by FaceTime or yeah. Facebook or whatever you guys worked out. My face will be on there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. His this face will time. be there. That, um, what, what? Face wipe. Face wipe. That's what we'll call it. <laughs> <laughs> what I would recommend that the select board think about is this. 
I would recommend that we go forward and we budget for FY20 the right. same as we budgeted for FY19 plus an extra five or six thousand dollars and that will help to bring our HRA account more in line and what I would suggest we do um, since we're on a fiscal year and Blue Cross Blue Shield is on a calendar year it's really not a, it's yeah, not all that years. tricky. What in July you move half of your HRA money into your account, and in January you move the other half yeah. of your HRA money right. into your account. Right. It may not work because we're not fully funded, but at least we're trying to get there. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's what I would recommend. I don't recommend showing a decrease in premiums at all. Everybody knows these premiums are not going down. It's Whoa. it's just a silliness to, to show that. We're, we're able to do a premium savings, but then we're just shooting ourselves in the foot by going over budget without an HRA piece of this at this point in time. So that that's what so I throw so, out to you guys. So health and dental... In FY19, we budgeted 45362 Yes. So uh, so this year, uh, you'll know, if you take a look at your uh, select board worksheet. Yeah, it says pending. It says pending, but the dental is pretty much identified. It, it's not going up by much. I just added 3%. They don't have their budget pulled together for FY. They're on a fiscal year, too. So, so do, well, they're, they're not... I don't, they don't have anything for them yet. So dental would be, uh, well, it depends. For general government, it's 890 plus the health. Mm -hmm. And for highway. So you have you still have a staff meeting on Wednesdays? Too. Yes. So you can meet with the staff next Wednesday? Yeah, or this Wednesday? And then in preparation for the select board right. meeting? Right, because I think we just tell well, them. Well, it's fear of change. It, so it sounds like, I mean, it's not, well, it sounds like this is in their interest, overwhelming interest. Are you available? Then we could continue this I, meeting to Wednesday morning if you're available to, to join Cliff and I. Uh, yeah. Wednesday, I'm not available. Because okay. yeah. Cliff and I generally meet with the office staff, and then we have the town hall thing before that. I don't know what the weather report is for Wednesday. Well, you know, and at the end of the day, I think this is a select board decision. Oh, it is. And we just do it. But I think uh, doing it think without talking to them first no, would not no, I know. be good. I know. It, and, uh, but at the end of the day, we're jammed up here. We don't have time to... I think we just pretty much decided to do it. I mean, I like this green one. It makes... I mean, sometimes people can't see it until they see it, see it and it's like in their face that they got this $8,100 bill that they got to pay because of this, that, and the other thing. And that could really devastate some people, right? You know, financially, or fear of using the plan. Well, that's for, that's the deal, <coughs> right? You because of fear right. of using so the then, plan, then it kind of works across purposes, and people right. get less and less healthy. And so you're suggesting that we, because the highway health piece, the total, um, is what you have on these sheets, but it's divided between the office and highway, right? Yes, so in that annual town portion 90%, in the, in the mid part of that column, you see highway 9010, mm -hmm. it's 52769. Yeah. And then down at the, uh, um, going down that same column, you see a total GG 9010, it's 379 Thanks, right? GG. Pardon me? General government. GG, general government. Um, so your t your total at ninety ten is ninety thousand seven forty two thirty six, right. and and I I bring that to your attention. That's one of our largest budget items. So mm -hmm. it's important that I think we we really look at it as carefully as we can and try and balance well, the interest of the town against right. the interest of the employees. The select board, since I've been on it, I remember has always tried to do the best we can by the employees with good coverage because it's a, a benefit that, you know, if you need it, you need it. And we don't want people to not have it. I mean, other towns have done other things they don't necessarily give as good of a health and benefit. And that's been really hard. I know the office staff understands it. The highway department has a harder time, I think, understanding and appreciating what this really means for them. But we do have different 
people on there now so that maybe some of them will see the benefit. Everybody uses this insurance um, for what it's worth. I get a breakout every month and um, I'm able to break out the usage, not per person, but for highway and for general mm -hmm. government. And we're all on there. Um, what, what the is it so it's widely used then? Is that what you're saying? Yes. So everyone's staying healthy and taking care of themselves and their family, and that's when that's what we want. Right. Um, what um, what the, the current policy we have, the thing, the thing about it is if you go to a, um, a doctor or specialist, it's a, it's a $30 for a specialist and $15 for a doctor's appointment. And the contribution that the town makes of that $4,000 to the HRA, if that's yeah. all it was, it was more than generous, it's more than enough, we, we wouldn't even need that much. But it's the hospitalization, the ER, and all of the tests, yeah, whether they are done in the hospital or on an outpatient yeah. basis, that's yeah. what get you. And the reason I started, uh, well, of course, it's part of the job, but this summer my daughter had a pretty terrible gastrointestinal event. And um, there, were, there was one little vial of, uh, of a substance that had to have various tests. It was $2,400 for these various tests, of which at the insurance, the HRA contribution paid, I believe it was $1,700. And it made me kind of look at what the coverage really was, because that one event in my family of four chewed up almost half of what my out-of-pocket expenses would be. So it, it really made me look very hard at our various options. And, um, and, and I, I feel very strong that this is it for us, for, our, for who we are and what our income levels are, that this is a good plan for us. Plus, your largest portion of this, the premium, is one of the lowest is is a low premium what you're gambling on or should I say what you're guesstimating yeah. on the are, is the HRA. is the HRA usage and obviously we haven't done a very good job of guessing well you've done you know it's not an as I said it's not an apples to apples game on mm -hmm. that one that really does change mm -hmm. with many many variables across time and um, so I think when so we that's meet a tough one. With, the, with the highway crew, um, I think we don't even do this purple one. <coughs> um, I, I, I think we lay out the proposed change and educate them. I think it should, I think one, it should right? be. I, actually, I, I, don't, I really think that we need to come to the meeting that this is an educational presentation. Mm -hmm. uh, we are going. We are moving forward with this. This is not a negotiation session. Well, we can just start. We can say that. But this, this is meeting. about educating you. You actually come out better, and they're not getting any younger. And every well, I think there are people there on there that will have their risk might appreciate is increased uh, in terms of that mm -hmm. uh, maximum out of pocket there. Well, we can present so. this as this is the plan we're going with, and here are the changes. Right. right. Yeah. We have enough. Um, you know, not that they, not not that an employee cares, but the general budget overall. You you have your budget worksheet. You can see each individual um, component of your budget has a total, and for the most part, every total is up in mm -hmm. FY20 over FY19. There is just not that many places where we have savings. This is one place where we can have savings. And I will tell you, what, as, a, as an employee, I had to say, why does the, I said this to Judy, <laughs> but the, at the 95.5, the employee gets all the benefit. The town really gets, no, I mean, the town gets nothing. They're, you're pick, putting up the $33,000, you have the HRA contribution, the employee's premium cost go, per week goes down over this year.
But it so, won't if we... It, but it won't if we right. go to 9010. But it just seems that if you... Because you're not covering all of our exposure, mm -hmm. but now you are. And mm -hmm. it just seems a fair yeah. meeting fair as, trade -off. as a fair trade-off. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it makes sense to me. I, I know on the GG side, we are in, we're in support we're in support of the mm -hmm. 9010. Do you have anything to say about this? No, I'm just very grateful for Sandra doing this research yeah. because I, I think I was um, not aware of my exposure. Right, I think that's huge. Yeah. For me, that would be huge as an employee. Yeah, how I much mean, that I would have to come up with if I had some medical thing go on. You would be so bad enough if you've got some medical issue going on, then you have to worry about the financial yeah. piece on top of it. Totally. That really can affect people negatively, health-wise. Yeah. You'd be worried about that. Well, I think, um, I will say this, I think this is a very generous package, and whether it is acknowledged on all fronts is irrelevant. I can tell you just by speaking with our accountants and speaking with our NEMRIC software consultant that this is a fair, more than fair, but generous package. Mm -hmm. and. Um, and I don't know what the response will be, but I think, honestly, it is in everyone's best interest. I, I, I think this is a, a good deal all the way around, even though it costs a little bit more. And so the kickback you're going to get is the raises aren't necessarily going to cover the increased costs in the mm -hmm. contribution to the benefit and Beamers is going up not only on the employer side but on the employee side mm -hmm. as well so I, I need to you know at least introduce right. to you whether whether there's enough um, sophisticated analysis that, uh, that's going to happen on the highway side or the general government side, there are in mandatory increases in deductions, and pay is just not simply going to right. And that's why we go keep telling up. all these people that come to us and want all oh, this extra money. Rose, you wanted to say something? Holy mackerel! That's what you wanted to say? Yeah. Did you get that? <laughs> Got it. H O L Y fish mackerel. This is just you. I appreciate your work on yeah, this. Yeah, this was this is very helpful, very very helpful. Yeah, no, I think you did a great job. And I'm in favor of the green page. Yeah. <laughs> we'll call it the green page. I just think everybody wins. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think everybody gives a little, everybody gets a little. Yeah, yeah. I mean. I really think we should decide on this tonight, so that you're not put in this situation of negotiating, and we can move forward with this, so we're not at the brink next week and I know that it, you might think it's softening the blow I think if you start with this is what's on the table and it's still in flux I think you set them up for getting angrier at us and uh, I, I, just, I, 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 I don't it, disagree with I don't, you I, I think we're going to end up here anyway I mean it was on the agenda it was on the agenda I just think this and this is fully within our court I think oh, this is part is. of what we do and we have like always to, been yeah. the most generous town of any town I know of. In terms of East and I've, I've been beating the no. drum to keep these guys funded at the level, both on their beamers and, um, and gals, on their health care. Um, East Mount Pelier doesn't have like, a I didn't like the cost shifting of health care, right. other people's salaries. But you know, every once in a while, we have to play catch up. And, and again, this is a good, in the trade, that the employees, again, come out pretty darn good. I think so, and you guys think so, so we got Or better than they are now. Right. So. I mean, even East Montpelier doesn't offer as good of a health care package as what we do, and we're a lot smaller. I think if the employees were all maybe single and, and in their 20s, they would have reason to maybe object, but I think mm -hmm. given the state of the age, the agedness of our employee workforce just makes um <laughs> okay. they're getting older by the minute well they're all they're all they're all over 30 let's put it that way oh that's a nice way to put it right they are well if we're over 40 i think 40 is when you really start to circle the drain isn't it yeah. i mean everything's <laughs> growing up 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 there no, 40s is when it like really starts to kick in like oh i can't right. do that anymore right all those uh, old sports injuries. You don't? Okay, that's because oh, you're yeah. out of your roosters. Oh, yeah. And also having 
kids, <laughs> kids playing hockey and then people getting old in the same family. So oh, there's oh, a boy. lot of risk mm -hmm. there. <laughs> <laughs> old people playing hockey, that's even worse. I, that's <laughs> worse. <laughs> I don't know, sure. what, do you, what do you guys think about picking something tonight? I would be in favor of, you know, supporting this green page this I, mean, I guess we should call it what it's supposed it's to be it's the what is that stand yeah, shift to C -A -A the uh, I do not know what it's okay. that's on those were that's how they designated CDHP it aggregate deductible. aggregate deductible plan that's what that's the official name Sandra? that is the official on there and this would enrollment be sheet plan name and when would this be effective January, January 1. 1. So we would, uh, I would need to coordinate both with uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield itself and then the uh, health equity outfit uh, administers the HRA. We would also need to update our contract with them. So we don't have, I just have one more question though before we do this. We don't have a line item in our budget for HRA, is that? I, because it should there be? I just assumed at some point in time that your HRA was just tucked into that particular line item, and then I was. I, I know how I did it when I was in Worcester. We were on a calendar year, and of course, this is on a calendar year, but we tucked in our HRA payment of amounts right into the budget line, and into then when the budget, budget year. But which budget line item? the health insurance line. So you item. didn't have a separate line? No. And then uh, when the fiscal year began, we did a journal entry and transferred money from mm -hmm. the uh, operating account into the HRA account, and that's how we managed that. And I, theoretically, ideally, that's the way you and would want it to be. And it was like that. Mm -hmm. I, so your initial deposits into your HRA were $18,000 in 2012 and 2013, mm -hmm. and that covered a lot for right, a long and I think time. That's what, right, and I think that's what happened, is it covered a lot, we always had extra money, and if we were doing our, you know, anyway, so what are you recommending for, or what do we need to put in for FY20 into the HRA, how much? Um, I would say, um, huh. You just put 6000 in, but that's only to get us through to the end of June, right? I would say we want to, uh, and I'm not prepared with that number at the moment, mm -hmm. but I, I, I think I was focusing more on presenting the plan. Mm -hmm. My thought was that, one, we would level fund the premium, right? It would just we we'd carry we forward the premium, the understanding that these premiums are lower, sure. and then I would say add an extra five thousand okay. dollars, so that there is something yeah. there to draw upon. So we would put we would keep in FY twenty proposed the forty five three sixty two, and add five thousand to that amount, making it fifty thousand three sixty two for a total in the proposed FY twenty. Well. Is that, is that, it's that is just that is the theory because that part of for that for GG right the yeah, highway is going to be slightly different but obviously. part of that forty five was um, dental so right. so I right. would want to back out those numbers and and give you that okay. number specifically I, I I'm sorry but I wasn't thinking no that's okay I just wondered I just wanted to have it straight in my mind how this was going to work I think that's that would be your best way and then there because your dental went up a little bit mm -hmm. I just threw in a ten percent increase the and if you say five thousand for GG is it the same I would say five thousand for highway and five thousand okay. for GG I just want to make sure I understood it in my brain and then you have a little something mm -hmm. yeah. A little right. something for to get into FY20. When, when it gets deposited, does it all go into one lump amount, or when there's usage, does it come out of this is highway, this is GG? So that's a good question. We have a separate HRA account that Health Equity draws from when mm -hmm. it goes to pay the vendors or to repay for costs that we have fronted. Mm -hmm. um, 
So what they'll do on the 15th of the month, they send me a sheet that shows what they're going to take out on the 17th. So for this month, it was $1,264 and some odd cents. And it actually itemizes by employee what those amounts were. So I'm able to. Mm -hmm. So I'm able to segregate highway money from um, GG money. Mm -hmm. And um, what I will do is I will post that HRA withdrawal to your budget health insurance line. By That's, whether it's GG or highway. Correct. Okay. So now this month we had um, $500, let's just round it up, $500 in your account, but they took out $1,264 something. So I needed to take $1,000 from our operating fund, move it into the HRA account to cover that withdrawal that was going to happen by 12 o'clock tonight. And, um, and then, and all of this is kind of done in the back door, and then do the, then book it between the general government and highway, highway okay. right, so that okay. it's tracked in that way. Yep. So now we have, I uh, think, $200 in that account. <laughs> so now we're going to have to put money in again. Four well, money, well, split probably. it in half. Yeah, it's... Um, so, you know, that's where we find ourselves at this point, mm -hmm. and maybe we'll find ourselves in a different place uh, as we get to the end of FY20, but again, it's, it's just simply, we, we already see how difficult it is to catch up, so we can't catch up all at once. It's no. too painful. Uh, we're going to try and do our best to catch up a little bit at a time, and, and let's see if this strategy, well, this is a recommended strategy. You, you can have any strategy you want with regard to your HRA contributions, but this seems, let's try this and see if yeah. this makes is sense. a little, yeah. Yeah, if this sense. works in, in, in a, a better. And note to selves, we're always going to budget something for HRA. Yeah. Just to be honest. Yeah, we're learning. Limits, always budget always, something always, for HRA. Always learn as we go. I did ask, um, Blue Cross, the Blue Cross Blue Shield representative uh, that I, who I spoke with, um, if this was a fly-by-night plan because the premiums were, were really attractive, mm -hmm. and she said no, this plan has been around, and as you know, as far as they other, know, it's a plan that's going to stay in place. So do we know other towns that are using this. I don't. All right. Don't. So, so would John, you were going to make a motion. So I, I would move that the uh, select board approve. Um, the town uh, moving its employees onto the Blue Cross Blue Shield Gold Plan CDHP aggregate deductible with the uh, premium split being now 90% uh, uh, being the town's portion and 10% being the responsibility of the employees. Effective. Effective. Well, that we need, we need to file. No, well, January. this is January. Oh, one. my goodness. So January. We need to get this. It's effective tonight because we need to. The decision is effective tonight. Right. So we but can the plan goes into effect. The plan goes into effect January 1, but the decision is effective right. now. Okay. I'll second that. All right. Is there any further discussion, comments? All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. I know you're Thanks. Thanks. Well, did you find any other savings? Fire department? <laughs> like, uh, like 31 Federal no. grants floating around that no one seems to when, want. When you wish that were the case. Uh, but, you know, we've got ourselves, uh, and that's, as they're speaking, our, our HRA situation is not really far off the mark from where they find themselves. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but you really just can't catch up all at, at one time. And, and you have to strategize right. and try and right. figure out, well, let's try this and let's try that. So I, I don't know that we'll save that line item, mm -hmm. but I think you've gone a long way to mitigate that line okay. item. Well, thank you, and thank thanks you, for thank jumping you. on thank that you. tomorrow. Thanks, um, <laughs> <laughs> John. Tonight. Um, <laughs> all right, so let's um, look at the rest of the budget. Judy, did you, are you going to stay for the whole I season? can stay for as long as needed if there's any budget questions or whatever. Okay. So here we go. We're getting close. I'm curious to get 
all these numbers filled in, compare the bottom line from this year to last year, and see what the percentage increase is. Oh, can I say something? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, when we take a look at our bottom lines, which on your select board budget worksheet, that's at page 11, um, let's make a note to ourselves that we are going to take out of the GG budget that $40,000 that we had originally tucked in for the, the Woodbury Fire Department. Let's find where that is. Oh, that's on page number five. And we're going to remove that. So as you look at these. So we don't put that in there until it gets voted on, even as a. Right, that would not be, you're not going to budget it's for that. An article. You're, it's an article. So right. when you look at your bottom lines on that page 11, you're, you're going to want to plus that 1,534,551. You're going to put in plus $40,000. Minus. N yes. <laughs> minus. For the minus, one. correct. So minus $40,000. From the 153. Yes. But the 153 doesn't include these health insurance amounts, correct? Not yet, but that's why I mm -hmm. wanted to be sure if anybody's doing a quick uh, Excel spreadsheet that you remind yourselves that that $40,000 comes out. That gives some room in the budget for what's coming. The one uh, because we still don't have in the East Montpelier numbers, and you know what? They're bi that's basically it. That's really pretty much. Right. We have the East Montpelier numbers, I think. Did we? I thought they had to go back and sharpen their pencils on that. They did. I mistake did. Under, mistakenly. And Bruce Johnson did a. You know what he was supposed to do the letter. He was supposed to do a letter, which I haven't seen yet. But he did redo that spreadsheet. Remember that sheet mm -hmm. that showed. Um, I'll have to send it to you. I'm sorry I didn't. I thought I did. I, I thought I had the first one, and I thought it... You did have the first one. Let me see if I actually maybe... So the, that's that's the only gap for me. Oh, and the Twin, uh, Twin Field Senior Center is yet to really come in. But Just to never I mean, virtually every group is yeah, level-funded. One group asked for more. So oh, far. Oh, so you were going to go through that list and let me know which ones to change on the warning, right? Yeah, and and you have it in your pro, pro, in it's your right here. Uh, budget worksheet. It's on right. pages seven and okay. eight. And I am pretty sure they are going to ask to be level funded because yeah. they're late and they don't have time to petition for an increase or anything like that. Twin Valley. You're Twin Valley. About. So otherwise, we have everybody in, right? Yeah. Um, um, so, so everybody that was on this list is still on it for the same amount, except uh, home health and hospice is four hundred dollars up. And then, oh, they're on the previous. You mean they want thirty six hundred now? Yes, but they're the only ones that. They are the, there's only one group that went up. And that was the home health and hospice. And then um, circle actually went down. Remember that was uh, moved up right. um, by discussion, mm -hmm. but they're only asking for seven hundred dollars this right. year. That's all they asked for. That's all they asked for last year. They leveled. Yeah. yeah, it was Doug Lilly's proposal to go up, and the mm -hmm. voters went up. But they yeah. were. I'm grateful that they didn't ask for four thousand dollars this year. Yeah, me too. Right. 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 I think they might have been surprised. And so that also, I just as a just just as curiosity, I, I tucked in, and pardon me that I did Oh, wait, that. community action. Where's community oh, action? Oh, right, they decided not to ask for anything. It's actually capstone is what their name is. Yeah. Um, I tucked in Kellogg Hubbard Library because they are level funding themselves. Right. Uh, and I tucked and so them. so is not some of not solid waste management. Correct. But you have it on your warning as an article. So for purposes of this budget sheet, it either needs to come out of the budget, so it sits in the warning, or it comes off Does of your warning mm -hmm, and sits in your budget. I see. So what do you guys think? I mean, they're not asking for more money. Do we want to put it on as a word item? Who is this again? Kelly Covered. 
I mean, typically we've put it on as a warning. Um, you had a comment? Just that we've had two special meetings about it. Every single year we have the same debate. The debate is always answered in oh, the same way. I think I'm, done. I'm wondering if at this point it can be in the budget. And then if someone wants to stand up and isolate it, they can. They can. But once it's isolated, it becomes a debate that has, we've had in this town ad nauseum. Ad nauseum. And a good debate, but with always the same conclusion. Yeah. Right, and always the same players. Yes. Well, it, it gets people educated. Right, and may, if we want to, <laughs> there's new people in town out. that, you know, that we, they may want to hear it again. Yeah. So that's kind of like you, the Woodbury Fire Department. They're going to get educated on where this the big mm -hmm. dollar items are going. The only benefit but of um, pulling it out of the budget is it makes your budget more of an apples to apples comparison because it wasn't in your budget last year. It was an article. It's really your, I don't, it's whatever you want to do, well, but is, at some point you should let me know. Yeah, and yep. maybe people are used to that, and maybe even the voters themselves are tired of um, debating right. it. <laughs> that being said, um, I think this whole budget and the warrant items are all going to be looked at a lot harder this year, given what's going on with Act 46. Yeah. Yep. I, uh, I would strongly recommend we keep it as a warrant item. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, and the school meeting is going to be first, so. Hopefully there will be some discussion about Act 46 at the school Oof. meeting. I mean, people, the meeting people ends can, time people can bring meeting. it up. <laughs> they can bring anything up under new business, right? If it's not it's on the agenda. 10 p.m. So for your budget now. So now we got to think. Now you have an that. extra sixty-seven thousand uh, dollars. That well, not, we do, but we really don't. You do, but you don't. But when you're comparing one budget year to the next, mm -hmm. it is a closer comparison, mm -hmm. um, and it it is a more real, I think, comparison right. because then you can add your articles, your your social service numbers are basically the same are weren't as well mm -hmm. but they just haven't really changed um but the, the at least we see that we covered out on its own it used to be listed as one of the social services mm -hmm. many many years ago we pulled it out and made it a separate item because it created so much con um conversation and people didn't really have a problem with some of these other numbers, but it was always Kellogg Hubbard Library, and I think they're prepared to always right. come and talk about and it. And who knows, with Act 46, you're right, maybe you yeah. a fresh look at that. Yeah. yeah. I think how how are we going to schedule town meetings this year? Are we going to give extra time to the school meeting? Well, I don't I even we know what the school meeting, have you seen anything from them? Um, no, the we don't usually get, get their warning till mid-January. Um, but I think we just... It's and sensible to allocate more time this year. Or have them afterward. It's not like people aren't going to show up this year. I think <laughs> having the school meeting first this year is a good idea because the Act 40 stuff, six stuff will come up no, before, before we do our budget. Yeah. Or, yeah, then or, or our could, budget down. Right, or it could work the reverse way. And anyways, we usually meet with the school board people, so I'm gonna have to yeah, see. We're gonna have to get on that. Right. Okay. So line by line, I guess. Um, yes. We talked about wage increases, and Judy had recommended two point seven. Yeah. Um, and added an extra 70 hours per year. Is that, am I got that right, Judy? Only because that reflects what I actually work. Okay. And so the new proposed FY20 budget for the town clerk goes from 38377 to 41062, correct? Mathematically, yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what it then there's reality. Right. And then we have um, an increase from 6500 to 19 for the assistant town clerk. Where are we? 
what page? First page, page, first page. In the green. Page one. Down at the bottom. Green. Book five. For every. Well, that might be shocking to you. If you look at FY18, your budget was fifteen thousand uh, dollars. You didn't. You didn't use it all. Right. We and in FY19, it was budgeted even below your usage, actual usage in FY18. Mm -hmm. I'm, I don't know what the thinking was behind that, but because we didn't have an assistant. I, I don't. Yeah, I we don't didn't know. have an assistant at the time. So we so. saved a little money there. Yeah, because we had the town administrator. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, so we're looking to increase Barbara's hours to 16 hours per week. Does that, when you when you're talking about, what does she work now? 12 hours? No, 16. So we're we're hoping to increase it to 20 as assistant town clerk, right? No. No, we're not going there. You're hope, you want to keep it at 16 plus hours to cover your vacations. So she's working at 16 hours a week right now. And the way you found the money for that is when Jonathan resigned mm -hmm. that we budget. We took it out of the select board administrator. You took it out of that select board administrator. That plus right. your extra audit uh, plus um, the select board assistance money all for all added up to that thirty five three forty two, and that's where you found that money. Right. So you're looking. At, so we're looking at nineteen for FY twenty. Um, land record books. Okay, we don't. No, oh. Not to go down this path, but after we're all done, after you know, whatever January February, we should revisit that health insurance incentive. If we have an employee whose spouse is also eligible for health insurance with their employer that if they cafeteria we, plan cafeteria, whatever but if they if we provide an incentive for mm -hmm. them to go with the other go with the other we, we provide some level of reimbursement mm -hmm. to incent and save us money <laughs> um, we started that conversation and mm -hmm. Jonathan was that was one of his work items and he left it kind of got tabled so we should revisit that I don't know if there's anyone out there and, employee that has that option. Yeah. You'll need to probably take a look at your employee <coughs> personnel policy. your personnel policy. Mm -hmm. That might be you might need to address that in there and there seems to be some other legal scaffolding around mm -hmm. a yeah. cafeteria we plan. To Jim about that. Yeah. yeah. And I did a bunch of legwork on it and did not get very far with trying to get a hold of people at the state level mm -hmm. and but it's not, not now, yeah. but. All right, so um, index, digitization of index cards. Sure. Yes. We received the proposal today from COT, and they are willing to finance it over three years. Yeah. And it, I need to sit down with Sandra and just, it, over the phone he said there were three options, but on paper it looked like there were two, two options. I and at it and he basically like said, ignore one option it didn't make any sense. So are they really there's just financing? one option. Are they financing or are they just out, uh, invoicing us over there? I think they're, yeah, what they sense. really need to do is they need to do the work up front. Oh, I mean, they do. Okay. the first year and then they invoice us over three years. Okay, is there and, a, and then an they, assessment they, for that finance? Um, it it was like, a, like there's it. an extra 900, I don't have the figures right in front of me, they added a, a cost of 900 per year. The document is in the folder. and. Um, Yet they reduced the monthly fee from 100 to 25. So there's sort of some going around. It didn't make sense because it was reduced to 25 on both options. Yeah, it was. And I one option it. was had an extra 18, 1900 dollars, oh. and one one option had was less 1900 dollars. I and then there was an initial no, OIB, no. which I, I didn't yeah, there's understand. There's a lot of alphabet soup, so I'd have to have them walk me through. I know maybe put it on there. What the differences and what are? Was, what are we talking <coughs> about? It's it's, old, it's, old it's you know the index cards with all the land records. Right, so, right. Um, it, it's mm -hmm. best practice now to have that scanned and have it be searchable okay. online rather than just if those if anything ever happened to those we would no way to in, know how to find anything in the vault and also people lawyers researchers need and to this be able is to access one of the, it online. 
And this is one of the reasons why last select board meeting we purchased, we approved a purchase from the technology computer. fund for this computer, because what was what's happening is then they would have to use, kick Judy off right. the computer or Barbara. Just today I had two people request, like, why don't you have this? So it's it's just, it's become just almost what they expect when they walk into a, a town like this to have a, a searchable laptop mm -hmm. that's connected to the land <laughs> records. Um, so this is my only one. question is, paper roads too. is yeah. would it be cheaper to get a loan for $30,000 at a reduced interest rate than to have them yeah. finance it? Right, that's what and I have. Well, well, adding another $30,000, both of them, <coughs> I don't know why the schedule of payments adds that $980. And and he sort of said, well, that's kind of like interest. And I'm yeah, thinking well, that's... What? But it's all this, it's... Why would we pick that option? We pick the second option. Right. right. And there was an option where they actually did the work three years out, but but that means, or they do it over a period of time, which would make no sense because I'd be adding, I'd be, have to be making notations in those cards, and it would change before they had a chance. Is to that what it? OIB means? What does OIB mean? OIB. See, in your second option, mm -hmm. where it's 10, 10, 25 a month, and 10. OIB means online index books. Oh, okay. Oh, so they're just describing what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, I, what if that other $980, that's uh, 18, 1960, uh, that is... Where are you? <clears throat> on the first option, that's mm -hmm. 10980. Right. Year one. I didn't understand that. Invoice out, one year out, invoice two years out, it's the same amount. So you, yeah, you well, would you, pay 10000 when you sign the contract in June of 2019. Yeah. And then you pay the 10 9 The next, next, the next year. year. And right. Then, and then so they're the adding next like year. $18, $1,900 interest, interest for the favor of paying it over three years. But if you pick option two, they don't add that in. And it looks like we it's don't think they do unless it looks unless like it's the same thing. So I can no, get back to him with these questions. One, um, one is based upon invoicing year out from go live. The other is based upon invoicing a year out from project initiation. Right. So, so when through? they start working versus when they flip the switch and say, okay, you've got your records online now. So and that so, would be a year. So it might not be until a year out that goes live. Exactly. Yeah, whereas if oh. you do the second option, they get that a year from when they started. So, so sounds kind of they don't flip the switch for a year, and we pay twenty thousand. This is common in, in um, a lot of IT um, um, archiving type projects and whatnot, where they talk about go live versus. Uh, implementation of the project. So they start working on it, but the go live doesn't happen for like a year out or two right. years out. And the reason they want to charge you this $980 each time is because they're having to put some of their money sure. up front. Uh, all of their money up front. Right, right. So we have to calculate what that rate of interest is. Yeah, we'll see is. what that comes out to and it might make more sense to. Is there any grants for any of this? But I mean, certainly, I don't think that you'd want to contract with this company and give them thirty thousand dollars and wait for yeah. them to do the work. You know. No. So. Right. Definitely not doing that. Not doing Belly that. Up. I mean, that's what initially they wanted was the thirty thousand, and then how long would it take them to do the project to get it to go live? Um, a matter of months. I mean, just they'd have to never scan things front. in sections. Yeah. No. You know, at the most, you get half up front and then half yeah, of the time they finish. Mm -hmm. The well, state did have all up front under a previous governor, and I think we lost how many millions? $30 million? Mm, like that. Something like that. That'd be really smart. Well, okay, so let's proceed and see where we end up. Unless we want to create a reserve fund. Where we just kind of accumulate it and then we initiate it when we have enough money. 
but I know you'd like to get some of it. You want to do this while, while you're still working here. Yeah, it would be nice. <laughs> and, and there's always a risk factor if, if we, you know, if there was some there's kind of a loss. Well, if there's a fire or something like that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it would, it's irreplaceable. Right. No, it's good. I think, we, you know, we keep putting everything off and try to save money. And we just sometimes... Well, you don't save. You just have to just do it. But it will only be more money later because there will be Prices more will records mm -hmm. to and more. Well, we're not going to be adding any index cards, but our residents will only be older and less able to afford it. Let's do everything while they're working. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm serious. That's how I'm That's thinking true. with everything we do. I mean, if they stick around. Yeah. Um. All right. So are we leaving? So we're leaving the ten in. Mr. Maps. R.J. Turner. Um, okay, treasurer wages. Um, the big increase on that is pushing that up to 40 hours a week from right. 32. So at the existing rate, your hourly rate is twenty two eighty four. Um, with the cola, sixty two cents. Brings it up to twenty three. Forty-six times fifty times fifty-two, right? I think it's right. You didn't put the. Uh, you got to put the uh, merit increase in first. Well, we haven't specifically set on a merit increase, but that was just something to throw in there. The whole. Was the merit increase pre-cola or post-cola? Which time of the year we're giving it. <laughs> I don't know. Raises usually go into effect July 1st. Cool, what's going on? I mean, I think we still have to talk about the percentage I guess the, merit increase. The, the merit increase is post-COLA. Pre-COLA. Oh, we're going to give the merit increase in this fiscal year? Okay. Well, well I don't then, know. Then that's pre-COLA. What I was hearing Otherwise, though, it's, there's not enough. Yeah, I guess either way, it's fine. This budget starts July 1, right? That's July 1, 2019. Right, the proposed. And we only budgeted 38000 in FY19? We did. I got 2392, 2393 with the 2%. Right, Sanders got down there 2391. You budgeted 38000 I think, again, I, I, my best guess is because you had a full-time select board administrator right. that would do things like HR, HR, HR and that grants. grants and HR. Right. Yeah, that was the plan. So Donna was, at, at that point, Donna was working in FY18 40 hours a week. That was what her wages were based on because you didn't have a full-time select right. board administrator so this was the and actual, then that person came on. Because we only budgeted 36 in FY18, right. but we spent 54. Um, 54. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that we budget accurately. Um, I guess we've got to take Barbara's name off the town auditor line. They won't be on there anyway. No, 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 I know, but just for us. Um, anything else jumps out at anybody? Well, I had a question about, um, That's wrong. you know, your, if you're working 40 hours under the treasurer's okay. wages. <laughs> Wait a minute. Let's have a conversation. Sandra, I had a yes. question. If you're working 40 hours under the treasurer's umbrella, 
What about the delinquent tax collector, 10,000? That's, that's, so that's an addition. That's why I presented when I did. Mm -hmm. I had no delinquent taxes to collect. It was $2,500 left, so essentially, and they were all on agreements. The onboarding of um, NIMRIC was all but done. We still have some pieces to go. Mm -hmm. So that left me doing basically just treasurer's work. And what it was coming down to is, it was taking me more than 32 hours a week to right. do the job that I was hired to do, plus the additional work that I took on when Jonathan left. It was no longer- Which was the HR- Which grants. was HR and grants and right. a town report and all of that business. Right. So the job as described, it, it's just bigger than it was when I was hired and there yeah. was no um, we did not talk about that there was no way to really gauge that until as it so happened the del delinquent taxes were done and the um, Nimric was on boarded so once those were out of the way I could see what my job really took to do. You're paying me for the extra time to do the delinquent taxes. We have $175,000 in delinquent taxes right now that have to be collected or some rough number approaching that. So that's extra. That's I can tell you what it takes to do the town treasurer's work because there was no other extra projects to do. That's when I came to the board to say, this is what it really is. Mm -hmm. And that makes and sense. Came, and that's when you came to us and said it was really 40 yeah. hours. It was really 30. 40 hours, and that makes sense because Donna did not collect delinquent taxes and she worked a 40 hour week. Mm -hmm. But she also, until Jonathan was starting to take on HR, but she was also doing HR and grants. At 40 uh, hours a week, that's right. exactly right. right. So, so my same, job is more like Donna's job at the, and I'm doing all your tax works work. I'm doing your, um, your, all of you, I am filing all of your tax returns, issuing your W-2s and 1099s, which you paid uh, Accountants World that's or right. Father Girl right. and Sagali right. for. So my job is, it is Donna's job plus the part-time delinquent taxpayer work. Right. And That's, plus the contracted hour. Is, is it too not, much? Is it too much? Uh, no, but right now I have to tell you I'm trying to confine myself as much as possible to 32 hours a week and still be honest with what you need of me mm -hmm. to do. And I try you, to stay to that. you work more than 32 hours uh, Yes, a that week. is true. I, I just want to point out too that I mean, there was changes with Donna being town clerk and treasurer, and then she, for one year, I think she was just treasurer. Just treasurer. Yeah. But Constantly. all that time, I was, I was really acting as assistant town treasurer. Clerk. Yeah. I was doing a lot of the, um, you know, more routine mm -hmm. kinds of things. She would do more of the research and projections mm -hmm. and things like that. But you and know, how many, and how many hours a week did you work then, as assistant? I worked uh, 32 hours as assistant town clerk. Yep. So I was really acting as both assistant town clerk right. and assistant treasurer. I was doing a lot of, I inputted all the tax, virtually all the mm -hmm. tax and bills. And so, so right now we don't have anybody assisting. The well, treasurer. that was gonna come up in the discussion. I know that might come later, but when we're assessing how much mm -hmm. work she's doing, that's. But I just wonder, we're looking at maybe three to four hours a week of an assistant treasurer. Is that realistic? If I'm working 40 hours a week and there's another four hours of assistance to me, that ought to cut it. It would free you up it. to do. But you know, I wouldn't be cutting and pasting and stuffing envelopes. But would it cut it from 40 to 32, or just make it manageable as it is now? I think it would just make it manageable as it is now. So we should still. I'm not. Looking, so we should still be looking at 40. Yes. Plus the assistant treasurer. I'm not reaching all of my job. I, I do not have a current grant spreadsheet in, in production. I do not have all the OSHA reporting done online. I cannot reach all of my job. Right. I, you, I cannot reach all of my job. Because as it you is have to do a lot of the mundane. 
Right, right. So and so, uh, well, with look, with here's the that, thing. Right? I'm trying to keep myself down to 32 hours a week. I think it's only fair. I have worked consistently over 32 hours a week, but I couldn't tell until I came to the board wh where that was right. allocated. Yeah. And it wasn't fair to come to you, to, to you or to me, <coughs> until I could right. figure I could it out figure it out. Yeah, and once fair. when the delinquent taxes were done, you pay me extra for delinquent taxes. Right. If it's five or six yeah. hours a week extra, it's irrelevant because you're paying me for that. Yeah. But when they were done and, and when Nimrick was done and I could not reach all I'm not slow. I'm, and I'm, ex I'm an eight-year experienced veteran of this work. I don't know callus. <coughs> Absolutely not. I, I'm learning callus. And I'm not putting myself in Donna's shoes. I, I that would be arrogant. Mm -hmm. But um, once I cleared away the special project and the delinquent taxes, and I could not reach all of my job in 32 hours and give you the kind of reports and memos that you're used to, yeah. write the policies, write the manuals, do an internal control. Uh, you know, there's, there's more to my job than just cutting checks, but I'm finding just cutting the checks and keeping up with my job I cannot get to the higher level work mm -hmm. that actually I enjoy more, yeah. and um, mm -hmm. the, it it just isn't a thirty two hour a week job. Yeah, no, we get it. No, I think we knew that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think we I think experimented with it we in the last. This. Right. No, and we've discussed this a yeah. few several times. Yeah. That, so you haven't been watching the movies, have you? <laughs> we, this has come up. Oh, I don't watch. No, I, I don't watch them. <laughs> I, I, I was going to say, you got better things to do. Oh, right? Jerome. Jerome, Jerome. I, I just hate even the thought of yeah. being. No, okay. thank you so, for that explanation. Yeah. But uh, that's why I came to you when yeah. I did. It was, yeah. it was, I was able to see it and be able mm -hmm. to understand, even for myself, why was Donna at 40, I'm at 32, she did this, I can only do that, I see the report she generated for you, I know you like these, I don't, I mean, I could do this for the town report, you would like it once a month, I don't have time to do an analysis of your budget mm -hmm. once a month with a memo, I, I just don't, they mm -hmm. take a couple, to do a good spreadsheet that tells you something, it takes time, time. And, and, and you, des you deserve that, but I can't reach that. Mm -hmm. So that makes me feel bad, I have to tell you. I, yeah, that's not no, I don't no. feel very, that I'm you're very feeling like you can't the right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And as long as you notify us, if all of a sudden you see a huge red flag, like, oh, there's no money in the HRA, <laughs> like, that's kind of important that you tell us. Right. So those are really, you know, we don't need to know every single line item where we are. But. Flags, throw us a flag. Flags, you need, yeah. you need to know your flags. And yeah. so I did discuss with Denise and Cliff, oh no, you, you were by phone mm -hmm. that day, but that I'm delaying doing an analysis until we have our numbers for December 30th because that's your halfway point. Mm -hmm. And that I think will give you far more information than anything. Right. Plus, I, I've been able to But you've compared research. From I mean, you you know you know where we are, FY19, and what makes sense. If we put in a figure that doesn't make sense for FY20, because you've seen, like the HRA, kind of thing. So that you know, we would appreciate that advice. Um, I, I'm happy to weigh in on mm -hmm. any of these topics. I am. You can ask me at any time. Okay. I don't. I won't insert myself. That's not my style. But if you are but asking me for an opinion, I'm happy to share whatever thoughts I have, well, yeah, whether you take it or not. <laughs> we don't know what we don't know. You know. So if we would appreciate your opinion, and it's almost nine o'clock. So how long do you folks want to keep going at this? Um. Uh, up here. That I, what else that's do you part want? of my job description. Right. My original job, job description was to attend a select board meeting, so I am here. Judy might not want to stay, but you might want to stay. Is there anything more budget-wise, Judy, that you want to enlighten us on? I just I know those. I think we put the key ones that have to do with me directly. Um, we know we're going to increase our line item if you look on page three. The IT support 
we're kind of we're working right. on that now. We okay. talked about that. Okay. Yep. Um, um, oh, did was Barbara? Did Barbara ever catch up with Andy? Please. I think he's still recuperating. She was going to try to catch up with on so. Um, we've increased telephone internet. We talked about the health insurance. Oh, do we have? Wasn't that county? Washington County clerks, tax. That Washington County clerks tax thing wasn't that? Did we get a figure from them? No, we don't have a figure yet from them. Uh, I just I threw in an extra two percent on that. That yeah. they're very steady. Uh, we don't just as like a place water. Mm -hmm. um, 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 anything else? I'll get you the fire department figures. You're going to take out the Kellogg Hubbard and Woodbury Fire Department on the next go around of this. Yes. Um, what else, folks? We want to do all these fine ladies right here. Valley or um, what are we going to do about the digitization thing? Are we going to leave 10000 in? I think we should. Over the next three years? I think and we just need to um, just shore up what that contract really means. Right. Um, and if we need to run the contract by Jim, we can do that too. Okay. Um, just to make sure yeah. because it was kind of kind of funky, yeah. some of that stuff. Um, so Alfred needs to get us a number on the magic salt. He, um, yes, and he may have forgotten. Right. He Did and I talked about the magic salt number. They they bought the equipment to apply it, mm -hmm. and then they added this line item, but he didn't estimate what the magic mm -hmm. salt would be. And has he gotten back to you at all on that tractor mowing thing? No, I see that you have it as a warned item. Right. All right, so on my to-do list, I'm going to send Alfred an email and let him know that we will be meeting with the road crew, all the road crew, on Wednesday morning at 9 o'clock to discuss the new health insurance plan and ask him about <coughs> magic salt and are we going forward with this mower? If we don't have we put 70 into that. On the warned item? So that he was talking another. like a hundred and Yeah, well I, I don't think they need to spend that. So I sent I sent an example of what a tractor costs. Oh you did? Used by the almost mm -hmm. brand new. And the mower, you know, I know they're like twenty five grand for the So you think seventy is enough? I think it's sixty, yeah, uh, maybe it's eighty in that ballpark. It's not if we don't have a real figure. East Montpelier spent. They bought top, top, top. Right. Crazy. You know, we we're going from money. zero to top, top, top. I mean, we run what we run and see how it works. And, and it's like okay. anything. This is not as critical a piece of equipment. I just, just need. To, I just want to update. Mowing the, brush. We're not. I just want to update the warning. Yeah. With however much. Maybe eighty. Maybe eighty. Maybe. Um. And I, I think we can do under that. But if we say, so we would take 80. the loan out for not more than eighty. Is yeah. that right? Yeah. Um, Woodbury's going to send us the language, which we will obviously review. The cemetery budget is going down by ten thousand dollars from forty-nine to thirty-nine, and they've right. confirmed it. Sanders asked them in every which way she can think of, and. Are they okay. sure that's what the amount is? And they're okay. sure. Okay. So that's, that's what it is. That's great. Um, and we have a, a popular Hill Cemetery, Poplar Hill Cemetery. It's on here. A Warren article. Yep. Um, and we've got the social services things done. Um, oh, I know. The only other question, do we have any of those five-year taxation no nope. properties uh, this year? Next um, the next vote will be in 2022 and 2023. So the listers ran the list of contracts off, mm -hmm. and um, so we have Adam. We have. Would you pass that? 
at Mac Community Center, at Mac Co-op. Yeah, the Co-op, that's what I was thinking of. Aldridge, Morrill Associates, Robinson Sawmill, Cal's Community Recreation Center, Cal's Recreation, that must be East Cal's. So we give them a, we don't charge them any taxes, but they charge us to use the space. Well, East Cal's Rec Center. Yeah, they charge us to pay what for that ten, oil that, the $10. that goes flying out the windows. I think, um, I think that's crazy, ridiculous, cheap. It's not enough. There's a co there's a column to the left of the name of the entity, and that column <coughs> indicates when the last that's vote true. took place. Yeah, seventeen. And then to the years. right of the entity name is when the Comcast? next when it expires, because they have to be re-upped every five years. So, so Comcast. we have for this year. Comcast is on here, but the last time it was voted was 2005. Yeah, that's not on there anymore. John says right. he does not expect any other entity to come and ask for a tax exempt status. Okay, so we can take that off. Mm -hmm. um, we want to make sure we have. Um, are there going to be? A, you think any resolutions going to be on ours or on the schools? Act 46. The school. School warning. Okay. So I'll take care of updating that. Well, unless the school board votes not to do to it. not do it, then we, we well, but we need to know soon because we have to get. Well, we they, they need to get going here. I know. They do. I'm gonna have a lot to. Of email <laughs> talk and they'll walk and this keeps happening. I know. I know. The, just so you know, the town clerks or the five town clerks are meeting with Bill Kimball on Thursday to start planning the Act 46 oh. consolidation process. Okay. Is it? When is that? Thursday at what time? It's at noon in Middlesex. and it's, Middlesex now, not... Right, it's at the okay. Middlesex town office and it's to talk about the January 14th um, district-wide meeting, like a town meeting that will involve all five towns at U32 on January 14th. Just a, will be run just like a town meeting. And I haven't done much publicity on that. And um, and then what's the date? January fourteenth. And then there'll be an election. If, if at that meeting they vote to go Australian ballot, then there'll be an Australian ballot special election the week of January eighteenth. I'll get some of these details on Thursday. Yeah, right. Because I think that one of the questions is this is being run or advertised as a special town meeting of all five districts, they need to do the proper time They just for changed warning. it from January 9th to January 14th because they but just calculated the number of days, so I think they're scrambling. So a lot of things are being shifted and I think maybe now they have their solid dates and they'll move forward with PR kinds of, because it's pretty short. So the 14th notice. they're gonna have a meeting to educate the public about what the ballot's about? No, it's, it's a yeah, town, town meeting, meeting. With, with the, where the town clerks have to be there with checklists and, and little cards and the whole bit. That's my understanding. So that right, but is there going to be an education meeting the night before like they do for like... Uh, I'll find out on Thursday what they're I mean, going to do. And if Kimball, which my guess is, he won't suggest that. Right. But we're about including our public and so they know what the heck they're voting on and they're educated at the best that we can on a very complicated set of issues. Yeah. That, that's a necessary, we could bring that to them, that select board, and ask you to. Information. Yeah, an informational meeting beforehand, and it shouldn't be the night before. No, it He's should be. Ram why is it so, why is he ramming this? Well, you, well, I don't understand why is it why February? Is... Why can't we have edu- Yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna answer for him, and, and yeah. some of this yes. is statutory timelines. And... But the merger wouldn't even be effect, in effect until July 1st, so I don't know what the big rush is for this vote. I guess it would be good maybe if he could give to you some a transition team. I, it, the warning is posted right there. Oh, oh it is. Yeah. Okay, well, I don't want to hold you guys up with talk about this. Um, anybody have anything else that Judy and Sandra are still here? I just want to say that for each and every one of you, there is a little treat over there and an envelope. And oh, nice. you should take one Thank before you. you leave, including you, Jerome. Uh, wow. And Katie, too. And Katie. Oh, how sweet. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Because we very much appreciate all you do for that whopping paycheck that you get. <laughs> <laughs>
Really? I would, there, we would, I would do it without a paycheck. Your service is incredible to the town. It's just absolutely admirable, and this is just a tiny token of Oh, that's really thank you very yes. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank it's thank good, you. it's a really good team, I think, between select board, the, t the office staff. I think everybody has their heart in the right place yes. and everybody's best interest. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. There are uh, nuts in your bags, and uh, you should know they are heart nuts, which heart nuts. is uh, a nut tree that is hardy in zone four. And if you're careful when you crack them open, you will see a beautiful heart shape. Oh, cool. They grow, they, uh, they didn't grow these, but they're growing the trees. So we are grafting and producing these trees. Oh, isn't that but they are a you know what? Somebody cross. really clever. And so this is, that's what she was saying, yeah. yeah. So take, take, you know, take a look at the heart nut. Lots cool. of protein, amino, uh, omega. And then to offset that, there's lots of sugar in there. Too. <laughs> oh, yeah. And that's right. A of course there is. A little bit of nuts. Well, thank you very much. It was really yeah. very, very nice. Thank you. Yes, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Appreciate thank all you. of your attention. Thanks. All right. Our, so, all right. Wednesday morning, 9 o'clock. Yeah. This is good. Because the town hall's not meeting. No, Wednesday. we're not meeting for the next two Wednesdays. Right. But for town hall. We're meeting. I and thought we maybe we weren't going to have to meet on Wednesday, but I think we... I think we need to. Yep, we need to. All right, thank you. All right, thank you very much. Good night. Um, good night. All right, so everybody's on board to meet on the 27th. John's yep. going to be phased in, or phased in, whatever, how you want. FaceTime. FaceTime. And would the board like to go into executive session at all tonight? Uh, I'd like to go to the that go home session. Do you need to go? Do we need to, Do you think we need to? Anybody? Okay. All right. Um. Well done, folks. Are we done for tonight? I think we're pretty much done. Any updates? Um. If there's any updates. No, just that I've been. Oh, I know what we need to do. We need to approve minutes and we need to look at the select board report for the town town report. Okay. Okay. <laughs> like you said, which one? I, how do you, there are so many, every time you call it up, does it make it creates a new another one? another version, yes. So oh every my time word. I didn't want to go into it because I don't understand it fully. How do we know which one to use? I looked at like three of them and I was like, your technology stuff wasn't in there. Right. Any of the ones. So it will default to the one at 11.55 a.m. that was created by me. Because I know the tech notes are in that one. And what I'm going to do, let's see. Can you just like get rid of things? I'm going to download this. Convert it to a Word document. Which one? The one that you put the notes yeah. in? Because I put notes, comments in on one of the documents. But. And it's not the one that you used, right? The one I used was the one Katie had put in there. Right. You had and some I made, in there. Well, no, Katie put them all in. I don't put them in. But you had opened Katie's. And right. And every time you opened Katie's, it creates you created one. another one. This is what I don't like about Google Docs. There's we got to find a better way than that. Okay, so why don't you go ahead and open one? Well, let me just do this. Because I actually went in and it was after. There's 513, Denise went in, 516, Denise went in. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll be ready. Okay, this one has got completely jumbled by. Yeah, what, okay, what is that block? Word, that's supposed to be part of the draft. I tried to get rid of it, and it would go, go away. It's not Word. Yeah, well, it's because the conversion from Word to Google Docs back to Word. Mm. What I could try to do, Denise, is... And I had taken out the up. extra spaces. Right. And then when it got converted to... Google, the extra line spaces were in there. It's like, what the heck? 
I so spent a lot of time on that. <laughs> why don't we do this? Why don't I just Blame Rob Richard? He got us going. Jump in. <laughs> get the thing get it condensed, formatted. And formatted in a Word document that will be user friendly to everybody. I'm just trying to figure out. We need to. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you. Thank Good, you night. Um, Good night. Because time is of the essence. Because we need to have this, hopefully, done by the end of. How much time do we really try to get the board? Oh, you have the, to hurry tonight. The, the select the board today. report. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, if, do we have I mean, oh, your select meeting? board report? Yeah, yes, it's, it's, it's early, yes, it oh. is uh, early in January. I just I don't want to get blamed for oh, the good. select board so holding up leave. the town report. I want to get out of here. No. I think that um, you work on it while you're ideally it you're would work be it in before the end of December, in but the first the week I was speaking for Judy because that's yeah. kind of her section. Right. But I really think the first week in January will be fine. Okay, because we're meeting um, January 27th. 7th. No, December 27th. Right, but we're also meeting January 7th. Yeah. So what Jen said to us is if we, if they were going to do the graphic design, they would need it by the second or third week of January, mm -hmm. but if we have the graphic design done. That's what Laura's doing. Right, uh, they could take it later. Okay. So that, I don't wanna give you wiggle room, it's best you don't have it and that we drive toward our earliest deadlines. Okay, I'm but, gonna but make, you do have right, I'm gonna some make the, I'm gonna make the deadline for us to get this done in final form by January 7th. Okay. And I think that will be fine, I, I really do. I just don't want to have special privileges when we've told all the other committees and committees yeah, that we have got spank for that. Oh, pshaw. We don't want to get in that territory again. Well, good night, folks. All right. Thank you. 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 Thank Good night. Thanks, All right. Take so care. I would really, really appreciate it if everybody could read it. And what's going to be the best way for people to comment if every time you make a comment, it creates a new document? Well, that's what it's in Word. Me, well, it is in Word, and then when it goes, and then when it goes when to you, Google. When you put it into Google. So what I want to do is I want to reformat it as a Word document. Mm -hmm. I'll look at those different editions that are in the folder. Make sure I get your comments in. Then I'll send it to you so you can mm -hmm. have an opportunity to verify that everything you want is in there. Yeah, because yeah, I had some more changes I wanted to make, but I was like, I'm not doing it. And I don't know what once we're at that point, I will see if I can create a new Google Doc that will not do this auto replication yeah, every time somebody opens it. Because if you went in right now into the folder and opened it it's and exited it, and you without making a, a change. Right. Without which, making yeah. any changes, it would create a new document. And you never know which one is the most current. So I'm not going to do it until Cliff gives us to go ahead. Yeah. Ah, oh, go ahead. That gives you a little more time. <laughs> gives you a little more time, John. Delete it. <laughs> All right, so we do have some minutes to do. Mm -hmm. I'm going to um, out of here. You can do minutes. Yeah. Okay. The sun's in town. Oh. 5 a.m., so I'm going to go. Okay. All right, so let's do minutes. Uh, we have the joint. 12 3. Mm -hmm. Thanks, guys. See ya. Good night. Good night. See you on the 27th. What are you leaving? Merry Christmas. Yeah. Oh. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm around. Right. You're around? Yeah. Okay. Say hi to your family. Okay. For you or Greg? Yeah, for me. Okay. Yeah, Greg doesn't talk. <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> oh my oh, God. Have a good Christmas for those who celebrate. Yeah, you yes. too. Yes. Thank you, John. See you on FaceTime sometime. What's that? See you on FaceTime oh, sometime. Did uh, she get you the bag there? Yep. Yeah. I have stuff for everybody, but I don't have it already yet. Um, did you get a card too? Card. Card. Okay, All right, can we do the minutes? Which yeah. one? You want to see 12 3 first? Yep, sure. John, that must be me. Is that you? Are you sure? Jerome. Yeah, yeah, Jerome. Yeah, he's mm -hmm. part of the team. He's a six foot four. Are we 
reviewed, I re reviewed Sharon's edits. Um, I don't, Rose, did you look at that? I did, and I, I made changes in there, but I don't remember which set of yeah. minutes. I see, I see yours. It's you not see my name somewhere? One. Yeah, we'll, we'll see it when we pull it up. Yeah. So this was um, Sharon's edits, and Denise said it was all right how, how that came out. Right. Yeah. So where are roses? They're no, not this set. Yeah, I'm at a different one. Yeah. Okay. yeah, that's really a pain in the neck that this does this. It, they must have fixed this problem, because everybody else must have the same problem. Right. Whoever uses Google. They fixed it by creating a new document anytime anybody opens the document. Yeah, it makes no sense. I wonder if one person puts the Word document in, opens it the first time as a Google Doc, and removes the Word document, if that'd be easier, because there'd only be one thing to open. That might be a way to go. I wanted to check to see, though, if there was some other way to yeah, turn to on the it. editing. Thank you again. Yeah, I, I'd so like to know that. Me. All right, well, uh, All right, so I'll make a motion. Well, the, well, where are the rooms at Rosemary? That's in a different I'm in a different, but a different, different three meetings. Set. Oh, a different meeting. A different oh, meeting. I thought you meant it was the same meeting, just a different set. Mm. Okay, so go ahead, Rose. Yeah, I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes of December 3rd um, as amended and as reviewed tonight. I'll second. Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Any opposed? Hearing none. All right. Next ones. So six joint meeting. So these are Rose's minutes, and I wasn't sure what to do about. There's a few blank spaces under. Yeah, oh, yeah. those Thank are the ones you. I couldn't figure out what to do with. Those. And sure I haven't to researched that. to fill well, the blanks. Well, I think we can't do these until we fill yeah, the blanks. Yeah, so we gotta. Okay. Yeah, it looks good to me except for the filling in the blanks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Are you? I could try. Um, I could try to um, get the blanks filled in. Everybody got a. Yeah, I can ask. I can ask Ty. Okay. Ty and Toby, and I could get okay. those Next in. set. Okay. Yeah, you did, and I had a question about what I should do there. I must have said it wrong. That first sentence oh. that's highlighted. It was clarified that the capital reserve fund takes in is funded by ambulance replacement, truck purchases, and other large. It's missing a word, isn't it? It's either got. I think it's got to either be in or is. The capital reserve fund is. I think. I think, I think they changed that whole sentence. Is this not the the um, Edition that I edited. I like I wonder if I edited a different edition. No, you're down below here. I see your comments are coming up. Yeah, but this it was clarified that the capital reserve fund is funded by. I wanted to say because someone was saying that that the way that that capital reserve fund gets money in it is by what the revenue is from the ambulance right. side, and then it is utilized to pay for truck purchases. And yeah, and other large capital yeah. expenses. You, I got to say that was a tough meeting for to do to take notes on. You did a really good job. It's been a couple of times. Yeah, so. they have. Thank you. It was clarified that the capital reserve fund. The capital reserve. Yeah. So can you see my comments? Because I, I thought I redid that whole sentence. Oh, you did. Yeah, I don't know. Can you no, scroll? No, but if you scroll down, Cliff, I see Rose's comments are coming up down below. And maybe you reworded the whole sentence wrong, yeah. or maybe. Oh no, I guess that's what no, I changed. Look at that picture of me and Greg. <laughs> I know, isn't that funny? <laughs> it is disconcerting when my picture comes up. That's I'm an old like, oh picture. Um, all right, so. Yeah, let's... no, I guess, yeah, I mean, basically every month when the ambulance revenue comes in, there are certain expenses that get paid off of it, like paramedics and ambulance billing and whatnot. And then there's the balance left of ambulance revenue. 25% goes to the contingency fund and 75% goes to the capital reserve fund. Oh, 
So wow. that's what happens every month with the capital, okay. with the ambulance revenue. So let's have that. So that's what clarification. That's what happens. Yeah, there's certain Let's yeah there's certain sense. expenses that are okay. So paid. Read, read that yeah. now, Rose, and see if yeah. that makes sense. Not read what the yellow one is. Well, read the whole paragraph. Okay. We'll, we'll take out the yellow. How about that? Yeah. Okay. It was clarified that the capital reserve. What did you do? She took she out the. Oh, you took the yellow. Okay. Every month, when capital revenue, when, when ambulance, ambulance revenue comes in. There are certain expenses that are paid, and the balance of the revenue is allocated as follows, and then I'll 25% to the contingency fund and 75% to the capital reserve fund. Thank you. And that's what happens. Did we ask Katie yet if she would be willing to come to the fire department meetings in the future? Yeah. Would you be willing to come to the fire department meetings? I, I would love future? to. Because I was like, I got to watch a video of this ahead of time next time. <laughs> <laughs> it was all going so fast about what had been talked about. I was a bit out of the loop. Yeah. 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 Well, I was the administrative assistant for six years. So that's why she and my husband really well. member for well, thirty. I'd love to if you so. don't want to, but I'm not taking your position if you want to take those well, minutes for us. No, but part of the reason that I had a few blanks on the minutes that I took is because I was writing or yes. I was still on, and then he would go to the next topic and. Like when they did fire prevention at Callis School, I was still writing about yes. the previous thing, right. so that's yeah, why that I missed a few things. That might have been in the handout that they gave us. Some of that about the yeah, it wasn't like on their agenda. They didn't have the date, but I could fill in those blanks. Okay, and then now why is this paragraph yellow? Um, I don't. The board discussed the possibility of using an amount out of the ambulance reserve oh. revenue to offset costs for this right. year. And acknowledge that this would inevitably decrease the amount of funds. I don't remember. In now. the capital reserve, should I add the word fund after capital reserve? Oh yeah, and that's what it was. Yeah. yeah. Capital fund. reserve fund. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. Okay. Was there anything else, Katie, that we had? The Some Rose? Of the I've got Rose minor changes. typo changes that. Yeah. That Rose did. Rose so those look. Yeah. Much. Bruce Johnson explained what. The recent use of the reserve fund changed origin. Oh yeah, original bond. Right. It was out of the original bond. Yeah. Was that it? I think so. If you scroll down and you don't see my picture anymore. Or any other changes to the rest of the Oh there's my picture. Yeah. This is your Oh yeah. Yeah. You did some significant. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so if you would just put what yeah. I wrote instead of that. Yep, that works. Yeah. Oh yeah, I remember reading this earlier today. Yeah. I changed it, I'm not sure why the update isn't going. Oh, there it goes. It's trying. Oh, there we go. It's probably tired. All right, anything else? Good at this. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Very good. Thank you. Do you remember to vote on that? Move to agree. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Great. Is there a motion to adjourn? No, I think we should hang out first. <laughs> <You know. laughs> I'll make a motion to adjourn.